on the right internet, right? Yes, baby. It is on. Wait, so good connection. It is on the right internet. It's exciting. <clears throat> That's nice of TikTok. I love when they notify people that we're live. All right, um, what is up, everybody? <clears throat> oh, just for your sake, let me find if I can find something. Um, it to show that we're live. So, good evening, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. All right. Hopefully, this looks good. How's it look? It looks good. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Warrior's Way. Yeah. This is where we get into mindset conversations. How can we, as what we do for a living, develop people, help people get better? And it seems like people are really complicating one important aspect of our lives. One of the most important parts that we were trained by people who don't know how to do it very well also. Right. Yes. So the one Absolutely. thing <laughs> everybody has been trying to do since you were a teenager tell you what to do is figure out love that's you we're trying to figure out relationships I have a crush on somebody I like this person I like that person do they like me do I like them then once you get them how do you love them what am I supposed to say they don't understand me I don't understand them maybe if I scream at them maybe if I throw something maybe if I do this they'll understand me better maybe if I shut down they'll stop screaming why are we messing up love yeah. So bad. I'm doing everything my parents did, and my parents didn't do very well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Why isn't my girl hotter? My girl is very hot. You are bananas. I always love our trolls. Yeah. Baby, you They're look, always you look, so good. You look hot yeah. AF today, Thank you. Actually. Thank you. you. As look do you. As do ridiculous. you. Ridiculous. Hater. Yeah. Hey, baby. What? You know how you know you're doing it right? When there's someone that has something mean to say. When you got haters. That's right. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for Thank being you. a hater. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. I love the judgments coming in so <laughs> strong. So strong. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you're right. And so many people always have, when it comes to relationships or how you should do things, right? Everyone has their opinion to do it. But then also at the same time. You look at their relationships that they're in, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, okay, let me evaluate if what you're saying is is happening in your own relationship. But I think that's where sometimes it gets a little... The fruit on the tree. Yeah, The fruit much. on the tree. Yes. People always have an opinion, but they don't have a very good guard in themselves. Absolutely. So you see it's... people who are like, I'm not in a healthy relationship, but yeah. I have an opinion. I remember hearing a comedian one time saying... It seems like everybody, whenever they're talking, somebody is giving an, an advice to somebody. People are always giving advice to other people. Absolutely. It, right? In every situation. Yeah. Which is funny because he said he saw two homeless guys having a deep conversation. And he's like, it's funny to me that one of those guys has <laughs> given the other one advice right now well, on they're how to do it better. Well, in the same position, right? <laughs> it's like neither one of us have a home. But yeah, it's true. <laughs> it is true. And, um, yeah, everyone always, yeah, everyone always has something to say or opinions about something, especially when you're running a business too. We've run into this too. A lot of people will say, oh, you guys should be doing it this way, or you guys should be doing it this way. But when we look at the business they're running, they don't sometimes, have a business. They don't, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> they're not running a business or they just, you know, Googled some stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is interesting to listen to, um, other people's opinions about things and you know when it comes to personal development um you know everybody's so quick to give advice so yeah, yeah. so what we're going to talk about today is we have done a evaluation on our relationship in the yeah. last few days we've been working for years at our relationship we've gone through fights we've gone through miscommunication we've gone through assumptions yeah. we've gone through um, highs and lows. We've gone through all the miscommunications that we can do as a couple, as I'm sure you guys can relate. Yeah. So we had to do an analysis. How are we doing in our relationship? And we very thankfully have come to the conclusion in health, wealth, love, happiness, sex, communication, and every category we can come up to for yeah. a healthy relationship, sacrifice, serving, our love languages, reciprocity, um, how do we reciprocate emotional understanding with each other? What are our expectations from each other? Yeah. 
what are the needs? What are our values? We went through our list. What do we got? And we were actually able to say with the amount of development that we've been doing, we have probably the healthiest relationship that I have ever seen. Yeah. My parents did not have a healthy relationship this way. Neither. Um, I don't have any examples of too many people who have a healthy relationship the way that we are. Yeah. The way we do our parenting, the way that we communicate with each other, the way we share our goals, the way we do our dreams, the way we yeah. support each other. We're doing very well. Yeah. We very rarely even get into arguments. Yeah, and that's saying something because that was not always we the case. We used to be great <laughs> at it, but we had to do a lot of argument practice. We, we really did, yeah. The we, reason that we bring yeah. this up is because as she said, there's fruit on the tree that you should say, do these people actually have the thing they're talking about? Do they actually do the stuff that they say we can help with? Yeah. And we've done this even through our business. I've never asked any of my men who are in any of my groups to do anything that I wouldn't do which makes my psychology background or even how you see philosophy stuff very different when people can diagnose others but never do their own work. Yeah, absolutely. This is a difference between like yeah. somebody who will come out and show up as a coach versus somebody who gives advice. Yeah, and I think, you know, you see sometimes with um, people that are that have addictions, right? And I think some of the best coaches when it comes to that are people that have been through it themselves and know what it feels like to go through that process and to come out even stronger. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we've talked to several different counselors and therapists and things like that. And um, again, to your point, they're so quick to give that uh, opinion or give the advice. But then again, you take a look at their current situation and it's like, it's always easier to say things than it is to have actions behind it. So. True. Yeah. So, I'm a very, very cool. If you want, we'll answer some questions on any topics. Yeah. But anything that comes up relationship wise, the reason we brought that up is I honestly feel that we are fucking killing the game right now. Yeah. I'm very I, proud of you. And I'm very I love proud of you. you. And I'm excited to have my life with you. It feels. Things are going Yeah. <laughs> It feels so good because, again, you know, not to like, you know, gloat on ourselves, but it hasn't always been this way with each other. You know, we had to go through some growing pains just as far as like how to be able to connect to each other and with each other. And so to be at the place we're in now, it, it feels good to be in this place. And this is what we want for um, everyone, um, this type of relationship. Yeah. So. All right, Jason, let's get into it, bud. Yes. Jason P57. This might be, this might not be the topic at the moment, but That's I have okay. to ask, yep. how do you figure out what motivates a person? Yeah. Is can I say something really quick? Yes, you can, Sorry. babe. <laughs> <laughs> really quick. As he's answering questions, if you guys have questions, you want to throw them in the chat, um, I'll keep track of them to make sure we get to them. So anyway, go ahead. Thank you, babe. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> so funny. So here's the thing on motivation. I've been writing uh, in this new book that I'm doing right now that goes through the enemy within, the way we operate our feelings, our grieving cycle, and it gets into our belief systems. Um, the way that I've broken this down, I got into a big part for motivation because doubt attacks you through your motivation into your feelings. So what the heck is motivation? And I wrote a whole thing on motivation, getting into the five P's. You know, are you moved towards pleasure, move away from pain, perception, potential. You start getting into what are the things that get you started. And what I found was the further I dug into motivation and seeing how people feel like they've lost their motivation or motivation didn't go through or as soon as I lost the motivation, I didn't have the drive to do it anymore. I realized that motivation is temporary by design. So if you're a move towards pleasure or most likely, Jason, you're like almost all of us who are a move away from pain kind of person, that can get you started. But the problem is, is if you're holding on to just the concept of being motivated, at some point within about four weeks, people get really unmotivated. The reason for that is, is motivation is there to help you develop discipline. It gets you started in developing the skills and the mindset for your goal setting to the point where when you don't want to do it because you're not motivated anymore, you still have developed the discipline to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you don't hold on to motivation as being something that should always be there. Motivation is supposed to be temporary so you can develop a discipline or a skill to do even when you don't feel like it. 
This is how all champions develop through their potential, through their efforts, through their results, is you train and you practice even when you're not motivated. So that's the way that you have to utilize motivation because it's not supposed to be perfect. It's not supposed to last forever. It's not supposed to always be there. But it is there long enough for you to discipline yourself to be able to do it when you don't want to. Yeah. So it's a good question. But I actually really dug into motivation to think that, like, how are people losing motivation? How do they keep motivation? Is it just goal setting? Is it just because they put a purpose behind it? It really is there to develop the discipline to keep chasing your purpose. Mm -hmm. What is your reason? And keep going, even when you don't want to. Truth is, anybody I know who's successful, whether it be in fitness, whether it be in business, no matter what it is, it's not because of motivation. It's because they do it on the days they don't want to do it. And that is discipline, not motivation. Absolutely. It's a battle between the heart, the brain, and the gut. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Good call, Crystal. You're right. Um, Wild Snorlax. Hello. Good evening. Hello, Chris. How do we chin down and barrel through the doubt? Oh, I love your question, Chris. How do we chin down and barrel through the doubt? You actually don't have to chin down and barrel through the doubt. Yeah, thanks for your question, Jason. You don't have to chin down through doubt. Doubt is much easier to defeat than you think. Doubt, when you understand it, makes it as simple as a decision. And you're like, no, 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 no. I've been pinned down by doubt. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'll right. never do anything right. Um, people have told me I'm a piece of shit. They said I'm not a good person. I'm never going to be good at anything. My dad told me. My mom told yeah. me. My friend told me. My ex told me. Stop it. If you want to know the definition for doubt, you can write this down and then apply it to all of these belief sentences that you've heard in your life that you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you'll never succeed, you're a loser. I'll yep. show you. Doubt offers nothing but takes from you everything. Yeah. Give you an example, babe. You be doubt and tell me I'm not good enough or I'll never succeed, and I'll show you how it works. Yeah. I have a great idea. I would like to start a business Making and selling socks. I have really clever sock ideas, and I want to make a sock business because I love socks. That's an awful idea. It's never going to work out. Oh, no. Do you think it won't work? No. How could it? Oh, maybe you're right. What is her offer? Is it to build a better business? Is it to create some new solution? Is there a better way to market or maybe even create socks? Has she given me a better way or any improvement at all? She simply said, that won't work. That's a dumb idea. Yeah. Which means she has offered me nothing. nothing. There is no counter offer. Yet, if I was to pursue my goal, I could do something that fulfills me. Things that bring people joy. People will laugh and show off their socks. People will mix and match and people will have fun with it. We can also give in to good causes. We can do all kinds of cool things that make it so I can do something I love, something that fulfills me, something that brings joy to people's life, something that keeps people's feet warm, and I can also make a living doing something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. This means my potential versus doubt is I can have a great life potentially or I can have a guaranteed life with nothing changing. Yeah. When you start understanding that the offer is nothing, then the choice is simple. Do you choose possibility or nothing? Mm-hmm. And when you say it like that, doubt is a lot easier to beat back because you go like, well, I hear you offered nothing, but I'm going to decline your offer. Yeah. And it, it's <clears throat> a, it can be a difficult thing to practice <clears throat> when it comes to that because... Typically, when you're sharing these ideas and these thoughts with people, it's usually the people that are closest to you, which typically you trust in their, you know, in your inner circle or you have the most love for. So it can hurt a little a little bit harder yeah. than being able to share your idea with a group of people or, you know, a stranger, right? It yeah. doesn't, um, it's easier to kind of like move past that one. But when it's the people you're closest to. Um, it can hurt more. Yeah. It hurts more because you want them to believe in right. you. But here's the beauty of beliefs. In order for you to achieve your goals and dreams, you do not require everyone to believe in you. Just that you do. Yep. Sounds simple. 
it not, not that easy. Right. Yeah, Spencer, Spencer, it's a mic stand. Like, we needed a mic stand, so we got a genie bottle. And if you look, it's hiding our microphone in the back here. No, 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 no. So this way you can hear me. Otherwise, you guys would never hear me. <laughs> yeah. It comes up every live that we're in. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you said your beard is Patch Adams. That's rough, man. I get it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. This thing is work. This is she does her makeup. I have to fix the beard. You guys, yeah. any of my beard guys, get it. This thing is a, it's a, a part of the day. Yeah. So you get it. Yeah. Yeah, but this is uh, we needed something for a mic stand, and she had this vase thing that she really liked, and she's like, let's use this. And um, I think people it's ask if it's a bong almost every, every single time. time. Every I single time. I think there's a genie in here, and one of you shall get your <laughs> wish granted. <laughs> The queen, yeah, the queen it's the queen. Piece. I yeah. think it's just a giant pawn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for being Thank here. Um, but that's a good question with doubt, Chris. Um, how does doubt work? Is it offers nothing, but it wants to take everything that you have, every idea, every dream, every vision, every yeah. hope, every desire. Um, people will offer you nothing though and if you realize it and you have the awareness to catch that they're not offering anything it's far easier to decline the offer for nothing and then keep pushing for possibility in something yeah sounds simple but it takes practice yeah. it definitely does well Snorlax says does that apply to financial doubts it applies to all doubts if you if you don't try you don't, there's nothing there to work with. And all people are trying to do when they doubt you is just get you to stop trying. Mm -hmm. I think that goes for anything is the way that you really truly fail at anything is when you quit trying to do it. Yeah. That's the only time you've ever really fail is if you're like, you know what? I'm not going for it anymore. Yeah. That's the moment. That's the moment you, you, stop, you lose. Quit. Yeah. But I mean, and like it, you can fail a hundred times yeah. and then finally hit success and I think it was Abraham Lincoln who said one success erases all past failures you can fail 20 businesses and then have one business that makes you 20 million dollars that's a lot of 20s yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you go from like failing business after business and then have one business that works correctly and you make millions and millions would they say that you're a failure or you're a success story mm-hmm the only time that you're truly a failure is when you quit trying. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, of course it applies to financial doubts. If you believe in yourself and you keep going, you have way more possibility than if you choose nothing. Yeah. Um, Phil, let's see. What's a spicy origin story from you two that you struggled to get through? Kind of looking for an inspirational struggle story if you want. Jim it, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that one in the back burner, bro. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. We can get into some spicy stories for you, Philip. Well, he's, yeah, even if it's spicy, kind of looking for an inspirational struggle story. We I think can that's do it. good. We got you, Phil. We got yeah. you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what is it? <laughs> I was reading Shannon's thing. How, honestly, open minded willingness, just a great pneumatic. This, this helps me when I doubt. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. This is her way that she attacks doubt. Perfect. Let's see. When you get to the point to finger at someone, there's three pointing back at yep. you. Correct a mundo. What's up? Just hired an electrician. Good job. Congratulations. That's awesome. Congrats uh, on your new job. Yeah. Bo Zajewski. Hello. Standing this. What's up, Donnell? Good to see you, bro. Yes. Uh, let's see. What steps would you recommend to overcome self-doubt? All right. We'll get into some self-doubt stuff. So, okay. Write down um, Limp Tempty. That's funny. Limpy Tempty. And uh, how do we overcome self-doubt? Let's get into Philip's story. Philip, let's see. We should surround ourselves with people who respect and appreciate us. Yes, Crystal. Everyone in our story teaches us that. All right. That's true. So, spicy story. Let's get into um, something I'm kind of proud of. There's a few of them. I know one thing I'm proud of is um, the safe place one. That was a big, that was a big yeah. deal for me. So, yeah. I'll probably start there. All right, Phil. So, you know... A little bit of our past. I grew up in a very abusive household, an abusive area. I grew up in Detroit, um, not a good part of Detroit, a, a tough part of Detroit. 
And uh, it was a hostile area, hostile environment. And in order to survive, I, you know, talk to people who are also from, like, very tough areas, very tough families. And I call it surviving Sparta. We learn to speak Spartan. We learn to fight. We learn to scream. We learn to argue. Um, you learn very quickly what Spartan I lived. I lived Eight Mile on Telegraph. <clears throat> so I was on Eight Mile. So from Eminem's movie, I was only a few miles away from that. That's where I grew up. And so um, the whole point of that is, is I grew up in an area where fighting and screaming and being aggressive and posturing and having that type of behavior was normal. And if anybody ever wants to push, I wasn't the biggest guy, so I would have to push twice as hard to go like, I'm going to show you that I'm a little honey badger. And so in order to do that, my survival mechanism was to just go as hard as I could at the biggest dude. I was crazy. I had no regard for myself, and I was a very angry man. When I meet her, and we've got our girls here, they have never seen this environment. In fact, if I tell them stories about my environment or growing up, they think I'm making up like some sort of like crazy, you know, fairy yeah. tale land of just orcs and monsters and dragons and such. And I'm like, no, this is a real place. People really do horrible things like this. I have seen it with my own two eyes. I have seen the bloodshed and broken bones. I have seen people destroyed and I've seen terrible, terrible things. And it seems like I'm just making up stories to her. So I learned when I got here that whenever I would use this type of behavior to try to assert dominance or to try to control situations, it would shut down the house. None of them understood it. I equated that to the movie 300 when they're like, Spartans, what is your profession? And they're like, hoo, hoo, hoo. They're doing that. I'm doing this in a house with a painter, a merchant. I've got a dancer. You know, I've got a volleyball player. Like, they have no concept of hoo. They're like, <laughs> we don't know why he's screaming. I don't know yeah. what he's screaming for. Because of this, I realized probably not as fast as I wish I would have, that this behavior was the reason the house was walking on eggshells. Everyone is in fear of me because I was being aggressive and dangerous. And I realized from a conversation even with my stepdad and conversations through um, just the, the growth part of what we were going through, that in order for my females to be safe, they needed the reassurance aspect of it. This is safety, this is security, this is all aspects of being reassured that they're gonna be okay. Well, because of this, I had to change the way that I operated. I had to change my tone, I had to change my inflections, I had to change my responses, um, I had to even change the way I use my cadence and my voice to be more safe. For my girls. Now, do not get me wrong. I am still a lion, but I do not attack my pride. I don't attack my pack. These are mine, and I keep them safe and encouraged, and I build them up, and I praise their effort, and I'm proud of them all of the time. But I will tear someone's fucking head off if they come <laughs> in here to try to hurt them. So I can still have that aggression, but use it appropriately. Use it safely. I protect my girls. I don't harm my girls. I don't have to scream. I don't have to yell. In fact, if I just give a little bit of bass and I talk calmly, it scares them just as much. <laughs> so I don't have to do it. I can just be calm and go, are you sure you want to do this? Obviously, there's a price tag associated with not listening to your mother. I just want to make sure you would like to pay that price. And they're like, no, no, I don't want to pay the price. I'll just go clean my room. I'm like, thank you. Mm -hmm. And everybody seems to be doing better. All our girls have 4.0s. Uh, we have one who's the youngest starting her own business <laughs> tomorrow, this week. Yeah, Saturday. Like, we are doing great things yeah. with our girls. And it was a big part for me, as far as all of my men, to recognize in order to help my household make sense, I had to learn how to speak differently, how to listen better, how to understand when they're sharing or if they actually have a request for what they need, and to be calm and cool no matter the situation because my stoic, my stoic responses 
make everybody feel more comfortable because I am the calm in the storm. Mm -hmm. This makes everyone feel safe. I don't have to blow up. I don't have to scream and I don't have to yell because that doesn't help my group be stronger. It makes them scared of their own captain. So yeah. we have found it's just so much stronger, so much better when I go, hold on now, let's make sure that this is what you're trying to say because you might get yourself in a situation that's not helpful for you. Yeah. And they all pump the brakes. <laughs> yeah. The big but thing is, is we follow through with what we say we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, that's too. true. And, and another thing, too, you know, as we're, we were going through this process and, you know, this was his demeanor and the way that he was, I could see myself starting to pull away a little bit and not want to really share as much because I didn't know what was going to trigger what. And my girls also, um, I could see them like not knowing what to share. And, you know, that's, it's such, it was when he says like rocking around the eggshells, a lot of days were good, but a lot of days were like, I'm not really sure if I want to share this or we don't know how he's going to react. So my girls weren't sharing as much. And now it's like when something exciting goes on, they have been able to let their guard down and be more open to, to Rick. And a lot of times they're calling him to celebrate something before they're calling me. <laughs> so it's, um, man, it was definitely he put in the work he put in a lot of work um for this house to have more balance that it needed fortunately it's working praising effort over results and things like this so m5 welding i hope that's what it says yes um he said he also grew up in the same way and that aggression one like m5 welding here's one thing that ladies may not understand as much i know mine did not understand that um, and even if you want to talk, this is something that we've worked through even with our men. <clears throat> One of the most difficult things with anger is that anger operates like gambling. While on one hand, it's like raising the pot to make it so that the ante gets higher. Higher risk, higher possibility for reward, but also if you lose, higher losses. That's how anger operates at its base level. So if you think about a situation where you start raising your temper, start raising the voice, which I call raising the stakes, the more intense that you get and the higher it gets, if you were to win in an advantageous situation or even diffuse aggressively, this works in your favor. If you get in a fight with somebody who's trying to do something harmful like manhandle a girl or bully some guy or do something that's not cool and you were to say defend that person or save that person, this type of aggression is considered heroic. It's considered helpful. People respect it. People love that about what you can do. You save that person or you help that girl or you stop that bully. That makes you awesome. But again, it's like gambling. If you push in and go all in and you win, huge win. If you go all in and then you lose, it's a huge loss. Because then you just get your ass kicked trying to save somebody and they're like, they may not even know you and go, geez, that guy got his ass kicked. Let's get out of here. <laughs> like, this may not work for you, but that's the way gambling works. Big, big risk, possible big reward. Yeah. But the possibility is also, say, in an argument with your relationship, when people want to up the ante. Well, what are you raising the stakes on? The relationship. So if I decide to go, hey, since you're not listening to me and I feel unheard, I'm going to scream at you. And since you're not really responding so well to just my higher voice, I may also try to get your attention by name calling and putting you down. So then maybe you can shut up for a minute and listen to what I have to say. If you just listen to the strategy out loud, maybe she'll go into some sort of like, okay, fine, I just don't want to deal with this mode. And maybe she'll listen. But what a high risk to take. <laughs> yeah. Because it could also make it so you damage the relationship. Yeah. She's not safe with you anymore. And now she no longer ever wants to listen to you because whenever she gives you the chance, it's a screaming match or name calling or belittling or putting her down. This is a gamble that if you go all in, it's possible you lose everything. Yeah. We have to be careful the way that we do this. Yeah. Now, ladies, 
if aggression is used correctly. Please listen to this. If a guy is posturing in a way to say, please back down, you're going too hard and that's not healthy for us. This aggression is made to do something you may not be seeing, which is avoid violence. When somebody is posturing to say, calm it down, I don't want to have to calm you down. This is trying to not hurt you. But when people keep pushing, this goes for all humans, when people keep upping the ante, keep adding to the pot, keep adding to the pot, somebody is going to lose. And it's not a good setup for people who are trying to, in that case, stop the aggression and slow down the violence by showing I have more power, so please stop pushing so I don't ever have to use it. This is a kindness that people are mislabeling. Because if they went from no conversation to physical violence, that's way worse than please slow down or I'll have to slow you down. In this case, your choice is, are you going to stop raising the pot? Or would you maybe go, all right, let me, let me see what you got. Let's play our hand. Calm down listen to each other so it doesn't have to turn into anything where mm -hmm. anybody is ever hitting anybody and if you really think it's just guys right now the numbers have been showing the abuse section is 50 50 women hitting good guys guys who don't hit back because if the guys hit back they'll knock her head off mm -hmm. so guys are just getting hit and going i don't know what to do yeah i don't know what to do i also think too you know with the emotional um or with when you're in conflict too, just be mindful of the things that you say to people that you can't take back. And thank goodness, um, him and I don't have that. I, I have never been that type of person. I, I would never threaten, I never threaten to leave. I never threaten to break up. I never threaten to divorce. Like I never threaten anything because those are certain things that makes your relationship unstable. Um, and then the same thing for him. You know, we, there's certain things that we don't threaten with each other because it helps, it starts to tear down your relationship. So um, I wanted to bring that up as well because I know that happens a lot a in relationships. Point. Yeah. Good point. <clears throat> Amy yeah. wants to know, um, would you say that this process you're going through was self-awareness or did I bring it up to you? Uh, this was self-awareness. I think that at that point she was shutting down so much that it wasn't really a request at that point. I think she was backing off and our relationship was dying. Remember, I was upping the ante too high. I was putting in too much and was running out of chips. You know, and at, at that point, <clears throat> if like she keeps folding her cards and just runs out of chips, she's going to be like, I don't have anything more to play here. And so in that situation, um, I was recognizing she's running out of chips because she's folding her hands not because she's trying to win. And we were both, in that case, going to lose the relationship. And so I had to really learn to slow it down because in this instance, the controllable for me was me. And so I can't expect her to control me. And so um, that was a, the point for us where I had to go, you know what? I am killing the relationship. I am too aggressive. I'm going in too hard. And because of that, my awareness says, well, what can you control to make it better? And once I learned the two, the two things that we have to do as men to women, I have to learn to be a safe place for her because women need reassurance. But women, don't forget that the, you have the power of words. Ever since we're boys, we love to hear you go, you're so strong or you're so smart or you're so talented or you're so awesome. We still love to be encouraged. So you can build up your man or deflate your man more than anything else on this planet. Please, just like we shouldn't be abusing our strength and our aggression, please don't abuse your ability to lift someone up or tear them down. Yeah. But a lot of times people have very toxic upbringing or toxic behavior and they'll cause massive harm to someone they actually care about. For what though? Mm -hmm. Pride? Ego? For what? Yeah. So if we understand what our roles are in each other's life, 
My job is to protect, provide, preside, be good for my girls and give them a good example of what a good man is. And hers is to give a good example of what a good woman is, especially how to respect a man, encourage a man, and build him up so he can protect, provide, and preside the best for his family. We are a team, but I am way stronger with her than I am with her tearing me down. And she is far more safe and secure with me being solid than if I'm feeling weak, broken, and unmotivated. Mm -hmm. But again, if you want your man to do better, build him up. Yeah. You cannot and nag your man into being better. But I think it, it does start with being able to identify what <clears throat> you yourself have to work on. Because in those moments when, he, you know, he was acting this way and my... I would just shut down. Like, I, I couldn't deal. I'm like, I don't know what this is. Like, I would start crying. And then he hated that I cried. And it was like, it was just a cycle of a mess. And I also, you know, have the mentality, like, if I don't like it, I don't also, I can be fine just by myself. You know, and that was kind of my attitude that I, that I had. And I know I've said this before, but my relationship with men hasn't always been great. And so now I have him and you know he's being more uh, aggressive and i'm it does it made me shut down i'm like i don't know if i can deal with this like this is a lot and so again it starts to make me think okay here's another guy You're like they're all the same right right you like <clears throat> typical it was bad and for me to get to that point to where we are today and you know watching the way that he coaches now men to improve their lives and seeing these men improve their lives has, lives has made me look at men just in a completely different view um, than what I ever had before. So you have to start and fix those things before you can, um, I wouldn't be able to build him up in that moment. I was so frustrated with him. I was just like, I would just shut down. So. <clears throat> There has to be that balance of working on yourself in order to build someone else up because it was almost non-existent on those bad days mm. that we would have. True. It was. You'd be shutting down, I'd be getting louder. We weren't being heard, though. So this is something where I said, okay, there's a question of, like, how do you, I think it, it was um, M7, like, go to the thing where he, he was asking a question about um, how do, what do you do when you recognize the aggression? It shouldn't be that far off. Nope, go further down. Keep going. You gotta go down. Oh, oh my god. Maybe it's down lower. Keep going. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, I know you just said, "What do you do when you recognize the aggressive behavior? How do you work on it?" Like it was some question like that. It was something close. It was the M7 welding guy. Um, the way that you can start curbing the aggression is as soon as you see what's going on. Let me give you a pro tip here. For all communicators, for everybody in a relationship, and if you're struggling with communication, I'm going to help you with the one thing that you are both missing. If you want to be heard, listen more. Everyone's waiting for their damn turn to talk. Wrong. Listen first. Now, what are some of the issues that you're going to have with listening? People stack in arguments. This means I'm going to talk about why you didn't let the dog out. And then your mother-in-law came over. And then you did this thing. And why didn't you do the, the breaks when I asked you to? And the garbage is overfilling. And you got this thing. And you're just trying to get back to the dog thing. Or do you want me to talk about my mom? Or wait, what thing are you, what's going on? People stack in arguments. How do you really listen if somebody keeps adding so much stuff that you're like, I don't even know which thing to even work with here. Are you mad about the dog, my mother-in-law, yeah. the dishes, the, the garbage? Are you mad about breakfast? What Sometimes are you mad it's about? the make-believe stories that we're telling ourselves mm -hmm. to add to the relationship or to the argument as well, which makes it even more difficult to so argue with make-believe. So <laughs> how do you sort it out? What you have to do and what we've had to do is I get the notebook out and I just write down her stack. Because she'll keep going with a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with anything. And even worse, guys, just so you know, as soon as I go through her stack to go like, all right, here's all the things that she's got, which is better for us, by the way, because there's no way you're going to remember all of it. But also don't take it personal. Just relay it to the notebook. You're a piece of shit. You never do anything around here. You're you're mean to me. You do this. You're like, okay, piece of shit. I mean don't say to that me. To you. Just 
Yeah. Thank you, baby. Yeah. You don't. Thank you. But I'm just saying, like, if you go, okay, here's all the things that she's saying. She's going in. She, I don't ever take out the garbage. I never respect her. I don't talk to her, you know, friends enough. I don't know. Pick a thing. Whatever the, the stack is. Yeah. Just write it all down. Now, if you want to be even funnier about it, as soon as you go, all right, let's address your top stack thing. You said this one thing is bothering you. She's like, well, what I meant to say is, and then go ahead and get a fresh page because you're going to get a whole new stack soon. A whole nother group of stuff. And then as soon as you pick one of those, you're probably going to get another stack of things. The point is, is you're letting her be heard and you go through as much stuff as possible, as much as you can, <laughs> to be able to have her feel heard. And then she'll go through enough stuff where she's just like, all right, I'm good. And you're like, all right, you're good. You feel like you feel heard here. She's like, yeah, I'm like, all right. You want me to go? And she'll be like, okay. And then she'll be far more willing to listen to you because you listen to her. This is also something for you ladies. If he's taking the effort to listen to you, do the same thing. Yeah. Treat him the way you want to be treated. And don't interrupt. Oh, my God. The do interruptions, not right? interrupt. That's one <laughs> that him and I, we struggled with this <sighs> often because... We would never really argue. I don't consider myself to be a nagger, but we don't really argue about any of like household stuff. Like we don't we don't argue about any of that actually. We argue about how we argue. That yeah. is the biggest fight we have. Don't talk to me like that. Don't interrupt me. Don't you n not me, it's you. Like nope. try to stay away from those things. It takes so much practice for you to to have that conversation and to be able to write and not say um, if someone's telling you they have an issue, well, you do this or you do that. That shouldn't be your response. It's a very quick um, thing to say, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's normal to say that, but try to catch yourself in those moments to not go right back <clears throat> to the other person and blame them for something. Really try to listen with no judgments and no blaming. Just listen to their words. Take it in. Write it down. Repeat back to them. Is this what you mean by this? Is this what you're saying? get their agreement. If they're like, nope, that's not what I said. Okay, then keep writing or have them explain a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, so Toph, you had a good question here. Do you recommend let her talk first? Um, I, I would, real answer is probably depends on your girl. You know, depends on her personality type or what kind of woman you've got. I've got an A-type woman. So even if I have a problem, even if it's my issue, she seems to still have to go first. So like, I just let her go first. There's I no like, way like she's going to go gonna start. I like to go first because a lot of times <laughs> I see, here we go. Because a lot of times I, I know when I'm being like, when I'm being a little bit like nonsense, like I'm carrying nonsense with me. And by the time I get it out, sometimes I'm just good. I'm like, never mind, That was nonsense. Like let's, let's act like that didn't happen. There are those moments. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'm able to work it out as I'm just talking it through and then we're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, she feels good. Yeah. I don't get to go because she feels like if she said it, then we're good, which is not correct. You got to let me go, too. Yeah. Uh, in five welding, most of the time it turns into me feeling like I need to defend myself with her mm -hmm. accusations. Let me help you. If her accusations aren't against you. Put them on paper and then make sure that these accusations are the ones that she really means to have. Because if you write it down and then look at it as though it's somebody different, where you're like, you said you think I'm having an affair on you. All right, so when you said that, what type of affair are you talking about? Do you think I'm talking to another woman? Do you think I'm cheating at Monopoly? What are you talking about here? I need to know your exact opinion mm -hmm. because right now we're making shit up. So I need to know what you created to even be able to agree or whatever. I don't know what to defend because I don't know what you're making up here. Yeah. And these are the things where accusations and assumptions and creating other people's um, uh, incentive or the reason that they're doing things. Like, here's your intent, and I'll tell you what you're thinking, and here's what you're doing, and here's what I think you're going to say, and here's what you're going to do in the future. And you're like, is any part of this actually happening, or are you just making up a bunch of stuff here? So once you start writing it down and just say, like, so is that happening right now? Mm -hmm. And they'll go, well, no, but it could. It seems like you're going to. And then get another page because they're going to keep going until they're gassed mm -hmm. out. 
But put it on paper because it's not you. So do not get defensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, always accuses of my intent. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you why that's good. Because you can then point out how inauthentic making up somebody else's thoughts are. Mm -hmm. So you can go, all right, babe, like two things here. First off, is this what you really believe about me? Like you really think that I am what you just made up. Like my intention is to hurt you on purpose. That's what you believe about me? My intention has never been to hurt you on purpose. I protect you. I would fight a grizzly bear if it walked in this house just so you have enough time to get out the back door. And your accusation is, I want to hurt you on purpose? That's what you believe about me? Babe, mm -hmm. let me make sure where we're at first. Because yep. I need to make sure I have actual confirmation that you think I really want to yep. hurt you on purpose. And if that's what you believe and you don't trust that I actually have your best interest at heart, maybe maybe this isn't a good match here. <laughs> because I'm willing to put my life on the line for you and you're giving me false accusations mm -hmm. as a reward. Yeah. Maybe take a deep breath and ask me what my intentions are before you make them up for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And in these conversations, a lot of times it is stuff that's made up, like uh, the way that we take it. Because sometimes I know that he will say things and I'll take it one way. And he's like, that is not, let me clarify, that's not how I meant it, you know. But, you know, for most of us, we've had past relationships. So sometimes certain things sound like the same thing. But sometimes they're not. <laughs> so it's important to clarify those things. Yeah. And don't get defensive. Yeah. I know it's when, hard. Yeah. When you get defensive, it almost validates their mm -hmm. accusations. Yeah. It's it's like a trigger for the next, like the next you, thing. You wouldn't get defensive if it wasn't true, which, again, is something they made up for you. That's not reality. They made up another rule that you didn't agree to, nor is it true. Yeah. Just be aware not to get like go into like 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 Krisha said, you triggered my trap card. Like don't get sucked in if they're making up shit. Yeah. Don't do it. Just listen, write it down, and then go, let me confirm that you made up my thoughts for me here and you believe that what you know about me makes this accusation and assumption true. Right? And she'll go, well, it just seems like that's what it's going to be. Well, okay, maybe. But, but does it I need seem a, like I need a, is it? I need like, a yes or yeah. no that you believe this is a true thing or not. You believe that the future me is going to have this mindset and this intention. That's who you believe mm -hmm. I am. Well, no, I know that's not who you are. It's just I'm worried that's what it's going to be. All right. Let's rephrase this to say, I'm really scared of this happening versus this is what you're thinking. Yeah. Can we at least change maybe the wording around? Mm -hmm. Because if you're concerned about something, we can team up on that. But if you're blaming me for a thought I haven't had, that's going to be a lot tougher for us to team up on. Yeah. And I think that's the that's one of the biggest things, too, that we learned is that we have to be able to go through these arguments in these tough moments together as a team to find a solution together not against each other because a lot of times we're arguing we both want very similar things but we end up going against each other in that moment when the outcome if we stop and think about like what do we want the outcome to be for this a lot of times is very similar mm -hmm. and so if we can stop in that moment and catch ourselves and focus on okay what is the end result that we're both looking for and then kind of work backwards it, it'll help <clears throat> Good question. Is it okay to threaten leaving if you intend to leave if they don't adjust? Um, here's the question. <clears throat> it, it's, it would probably be a last resort card if you would ever do that. And real talk, if you're already threatening to leave, you probably already have a foot out the door already. If you're ever to the point of trying to threaten the relationship to be better, you're probably not communicating as well as you think. Real talk. If I was ever like, get it together or I'm leaving, like this mm -hmm. threat or this ultimatum it, is is usually a death gargle for a dynamic. One person's going to start leaving. Either it's going to be if he's saying that to me. How, does, my, you, how does your safety security feel if I say not that? Not at all. I'm already in my mind starting to get my shit in order. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I think when you say, th you know, threatening to say that, you know, it's no, it's, it's not ever good. But I think if you're going to have that conversation, you have to stick with it, you know, because I, I've seen so many people say, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to leave. But that's all they do. It's like having little kids. You say you do this one more time and then this is going to happen, but it never happens. So then they stop believing you. Still breaks but then, trust. Yeah. But it, again, it's still, yeah, it's still breaking trust. And so if that conversation is going to happen, it needs to be more of a serious conversation that's not happening during an argument. Mm -hmm. So you guys can talk through it. Yeah, well said. <clears throat> so good question. I would, I would probably not resort to threats when you're trying to love. Um, I think it was uh, Carlin, George Carlin, who said if you're trying to fight for peace, like in this case, if you're fighting for love, uh, fighting for peace is like screwing for virginity. Mm-hmm not going to work yeah. <laughs> like if you want things to be peaceful operate peacefully mm -hmm. if you want things to be chaotic and crazy be chaotic and crazy yeah. make threats accusations go into ultimatums it's just a death gargle for your relationship it means you guys aren't listening to each other yeah you don't know what she needs and she doesn't know what you need mm -hmm. so try and figure that shit out that's pretty a big deal <laughs> yeah there was a question that was asked earlier um, that I told him we would get to. Mm -hmm. um, the question was, can you talk about emotional affairs in a long-term relationship? Oh. This was Daddy Cowder, I think is who asked it. Emotional affairs in long-term relationships. Does that mean like, uh, just because the terminology keeps getting changed so quickly? I don't think it matters if it's a long-term relationship or not. If you're in a relationship. <laughs> if you're having an emotional, emotional affair yeah. is like when you're, what, just sharing with somebody more or something like Define emotional affair the way that you think it is. Yeah, it's, it feels like it people could, are changing be, these words. It could be a lot of different things. Like Thanks, um, talking to another person outside of your relationship of the opposite sex or uh, depending on what your sexual whatever is. <sighs> but um, having a conversation, talking to a person daily, sharing details about your dynamic mm -hmm. with somebody. So like trying to emotionally Flirt, be, connect with yeah, somebody Could else. be a little flirting, yeah. Almost like, it feels like the emotional affair thing is kind of the precursor to creating a relationship to be with someone else. Mm -hmm. Does that seem fair? Yeah, pretty okay. much. And, and maybe, hopefully I'm, I'm relaying that right. If you guys have a different definition for how emotional affair works than what we just kind of broke down, I'm very open to hear. But as far as it stands, I think we're going to go with that one. Um, as far as... It says, what's the question, how to work through? Can you move your hands, please, baby? I just want you to talk about talk emotional affairs in a long-term oh, relationship. Oh, all right. What's our, what's our opinion on it? Um, my opinion is is it's a terrible idea if you want to have a healthy relationship to start a relationship with somebody else. I think very simply. Yeah. <laughs> That's as simply as I can put it. If I want our relationship strong, I can't be investing my attention emotions my time my energy my dreams my hopes my goals my love i can't put that into somebody else and have us be good mm -hmm. i don't see how that works because eventually and this is just the reality of how we operate you're going to start losing steam in one direction or another and it's, it's she'll notice if i started emotionally giving myself to somebody else she would notice me pulling away and it would be vice versa, too. I would notice if she's just pulling away because you're going to be giving your energy to somebody. Yeah. And if you've already told the best parts of your day, you already shared what was great, you already went yeah. into, like, here's what I love the most about you and all these things, you'll probably subconsciously start doing the comparison. The bargaining system will come in for the loss already to justify why would I treat this person this way? Well, all of the rose-colored glasses are still on for the new person. So since I know everything about you already, all the mystery and the beauty and all the possibilities and potential for this person is so exciting because you don't know yet. Yeah, I don't think that anything about that is going to be helpful for anybody. I think it's a better idea if you're going to try and work on having the best lawn that you can the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greenest where you water it. Mm -hmm. So if you want your person and you to be good, treat it good. Yeah. If you don't want a good lawn at home, water somebody else's lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Toph. Appreciate yeah. you. The beard loves you. So Jeremy said, if my girlfriend cheated on someone with me, do I need to worry about her doing it to me? Thoughts? 
it seems like it's it statistically yes guaranteed can't say a hundred percent is it possible for somebody to be in a relationship that is toxic and not healthy and they end up falling into a dynamic with somebody where it is healthy and they recognize they need to go and they're in a relationship and they start realizing like there is a healthy dynamic that exists does that mean they're always going to cheat no not always statistically speaking if you are with somebody who cheats on all the people that they're with or they do cheat on people it is a high probability so i would it would really be situational it's not guaranteed statistically leaning more towards if they're cheating regularly probably but if it's a some odd situation where somebody who is very loyal or high loyalty based um, value system and they were in a bad relationship or they were being mistreated or abused or treated poorly and they found themselves into a healthy situation with you it would be highly probable in that case maybe not so it's uh, situational unfortunately statistically not in your favor but there are exceptions to this rule so yeah. it depends on the situation yeah but thank and also you. I, I think it's important to ask like you know if they can share what they learned from that experience and like how that made them feel or just get more information from them because if they're like he deserved it anyway like that's very different than you know what I understand like now where I'm at in my life could never do that to someone again. Yeah, you just, know? justifications are a red flag, brother. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. he was a jerk and he deserved me to cheat on him. Not good. <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Red flag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a. It's it's just a it's just a vase that she got. I call it the genie's bottle. Um, real talk. It's our microphone stand. I've got a lapel mic hooked up here just because yeah. it's the only mic that plugs into this iPad to make it so you guys can hear us. Otherwise, it sounds like this when I'm talking. Mm -hmm. And you guys wouldn't be able to hear me very well. So I'm actually yeah. talking into the, I, the genie bottle. I agree with you, Wild Source Norlax. If you can choose to date, you can choose to end a relationship. Yeah, in your opinion. I, I agree with you and mm -hmm. everybody is aware of how I feel about that. <laughs> strongly. You feel strongly. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some good questions. There's a few that we missed. I know that. Yes. Um, let me go back a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan. That's a that's a heavy one. Um, connected. Your wife connected. With a coworker. With a coworker emotionally. Like, um, it's tough too. I think we talked a little bit about work dynamics on that. It's a, it's not an easy scenario for that, especially if you're spending all day with another person. And even if it's not somebody you normally would be attracted to, if you're spending eight hours a day with somebody, you know, and you're learning things and talking to them and hanging out and learning about their life and what do they like to do and what are their dreams and aspirations, you're just in the same cubicle space every day. You get used to each other and it starts to evolve. It's not intended and not a good thing. And this is one example as to why, like right now, um, the jury is kind of out if men and women are really effective working together. It really is kind of like we don't know where the line is to make it so it's a healthy environment. It seems like it creates a lot of problems having men and women work together. Like in all aspects, everything from false accusations for sexual harassment to you know, sensitivity training to falling yeah. in love outside of marriages. Like, it seems like they don't know where are the lines. What are dress codes that are appropriate or inappropriate? Should you wear perfume or cologne or not? Like, what what power dynamics work and don't work? Everyone's still trying to figure out where the lines are because mm -hmm. nobody knows. Right. And so it's a tricky world at the moment because it's causing a lot more problems than solutions at the moment. And so the jury is kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> right yeah. now. So, yeah, good, good, good call there, Ryan. It's a good. It's sorry, sorry that had to happen to you, but it seems more and more common with just the structure that exists at the moment. <clears throat> yeah. Do your self reflection inside. It was rough, but I'm not a cheater. It's good to have your belief systems in check too. Yeah. 
All right. What, what, what questions did we miss, baby? I don't know. Nice. <laughs> I started going back and I'm like, I think you answered all the ones that we had. If not, you guys could ask them again. (laughs) (laughs) But I believe we got most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys for being here. Um, Thank you guys for interacting with us and thank you for the questions. And our whole goal here is to help people. Yeah. Right now, for any of our guys, we opened up a whole bunch of calls, like a bunch of time slots opened on our call list. Um, We also opened up to where we're going to be doing very, very late calls for some of our guys who work much later and can't do daytime phone calls. So starting this week, we're going to be opening up much later time slots for people to be able to book times after 6 p.m. so we can be able to get to some of the people who uh, need more help. I've also got one of our guys who works in Australia who's going to be taking phone calls. He's amazing and so passionate at what we do to help men yeah. and because of the time zone change i think he's nine hours behind us Super this helpful. means <laughs> if you don't get off of work till 10 p.m or you don't yeah. get off of work till midnight but you still want to take that call it's you know 3 p.m for him no yeah. problem <laughs> you know so it it's is great easier yeah yeah it's fantastic so if you were looking to book an appointment um and some of the time slots were already filled go back and check them out one more time because uh <clears throat> Yeah, and this is also what I want to say too. If you are looking to book an appointment specifically for Rick and not one of the other coaches, you have to put that in the comments. Otherwise, we don't know. So, Yeah, odds are I would not be on the call unless it's very specific that it's for me that you need to talk to. Um, Then I can work something out with our guys. Yeah. Uh, Callan, it's a good question. On a serious note, at what point would you recommend divorce? Um, The point that I would recommend divorce is after I have talked to both of you to see what the willingness level to save the the dynamic is. If I can see that one person has no intention to try to get better or work on this relationship, there's just, there's literally, I don't even want to try. In fact, if they speak about not being with you and get starry-eyed. He's saying I'm trying. What? He says he's trying. Trying what? I think to not have it be a divorce. Okay. Yeah. Oh, are we talking about a different thing? No, we're talking about the same guy. Okay. Well, I was oh, no, no, we're not. <laughs> Scratch that. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Listen, I am on it. Yeah. I am on it. Good job. And yes. <laughs> well, right. I'm glad you're trying, Jeremy. So, so Callan. Callan. <laughs> <laughs> So if, um, if you two were really seriously at the point where you don't know which way to go. NPC fail. That's funny. I know. I know. Oh, my god. Game glitch. Yeah. Callan, um, I would say if you two really want to know, if you two are serious and you really, really want to get into, like, do we have a chance here or not, I would be willing to have a conversation with both of you to see if there's still hope in both of you. If you both have a willingness to fight and you just don't know what it is that you're missing, that's a very different thing to work towards than we have no idea what we're doing. We have no clue and we've used up all of the things that we know. If there's something that you guys need that gives you hope, we'll help you do it. And if at the end of the phone call or Mm -hmm. after the end of understanding each other, you either you're like, I'd still fight. And she's like, I don't want to fight. I don't give a shit what happens. If that's the that's the point you're at, I don't know what to do with someone who does not have willingness. Yeah, he said, Colin Farrell did say this time. Um, I honestly don't care about my relationship anymore. I feel like I'm beyond the point of return. In which case, uh, you don't have to ask my advice, or I don't have to give you validation on what you believe is right. It seems like you've already made your decision, and now it's just time to stick to what you believe is the right thing to do. But if you have no willingness to make this relationship work. You're just wasting some of your valuable time and hers. Yeah. We both don't, We like both of you guys don't have very much time in this life. So give each other a chance to find happiness because not everybody is meant to fit together. And that's okay. Give her a chance to find somebody who matches her and you a chance to match with somebody who matches you. But if you already have an answer where like, I'm done. Well, then <laughs> there's nothing to fight for yeah. if you don't want to fight for it. Yeah, I think that's the biggest point. I just want to, you know 
there are people that when small things go wrong, they're just like, I'm out, you know, and it's kind of like they just cancel their own relationship so quickly and not really try to work on it. I'm assuming that's not your situation because we don't know. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. All right. I'm expecting my first child and want to fix myself so I can give her the best father she deserves. Cool. Very well, exciting. good luck on your journey. I, I hope that you do well so so you can. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk about it or you think that I could help, uh, book a call. But otherwise, fight the good fight, brother. Keep doing better. Yeah. And be a good dad. Be the best dad you can be, man. Yeah. Keep going for it. Um, there was one question, too. Let's see. I was asking about a GF with bipolar disorder. And he, he responded, responded to, to me. me. I think it was, yeah. Okay. I think Phil, one of the guys did. <clears throat> Bipolar disorder is a very difficult one. Also, it's it falls like under the same kind of concept as like um, different levels of it. It's sort of like depression. Like you can be sad and levels of depressed. Borderline personality disorder. Oh, is it is it is it uh, bipolar it can disorder? Be, is it, yeah, this, this one is the hard thing when everybody does like acronyms. That not are bipolar. Anything. Not bipolar. All right. Yeah. All right. Borderline personality disorder. <laughs> Uh, man, people are. I, I'd have to know if this personality disorder is like diagnosed from somebody who like they work in that field, or if it's like I WebMD that shit and that's what they have. I see more and more people just trying to be the doctor for mental disorders and diagnose everybody. So, was this one of the things that like? No, she's been through all the tests, and she's been shown that she has multiple personalities, like borderline personality disorder. If she's running into, like, I don't know who I am in myself and running through some stuff, I, I, I would probably work in the belief system area for it. And if that person, I don't know, I'd have to know too much, too much more about it. This is, it's too open. And I wish I could be simple, but if I was like, tell me something about somebody who has anger. You're like, well, I don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I could give a blanket statement, but I don't know how that helps. <laughs> is it self-esteem and depression? Where should I start? Uh, being able to talk with somebody who can help you sort it out. That's where you should start. Self-esteem is the way you see yourself. But if you're in depression, that means you're in a shame system that beats yourself down. So that means when you do a self-esteem assessment and you're in depression, you're going to be just beating yourself up to pieces because depression, by definition, is a self-attack. This means you're beating yourself down with the belief systems of how your loss or what it is that you've gone through has affected you in a way to make it so you can reassure that you're not good. You're mm -hmm. bad. You suck. You're not good enough. You're not worth it. Whatever you're saying to yourself to doubt and shame yourself into a deep, dark hole. If you're doing this system, there's no way to be able to have a self-esteem that's going to match any type of purpose or hope, which is the two things that cure depression. Understanding your own ability to have potential or possibility or hope again, a, a reason to do things that are worth more than nothing. Mm -hmm. And when you get caught up in that nothing system or that shaming system, you actually start to manifest, like manifest doubt. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you actually manifest and you personify nothing. Yeah. When you see somebody who's depressed, they don't even want to get out of bed. Yeah. They don't want to move. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to exist. They want to do nothing. And so, if you fall into that cycle, um, you're going to have to take piece by piece, get rid of some of the garbage. And uh, EpiPen, um, I would suggest to book a call, you know, book a call with one of the guys, or if you want to talk to Rick specifically, just put in the comments. But it, the link is at the top of the bio. Um, it's free to book a call. Mm. Just have a conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. There was, I don't think it's still up here. Mm -hmm. Um <coughs> Mutually got out of our long-term relationship. New woman I am talking to is hesitant about dating. I think everybody's hesitant about That's dating true. these days. So it sounds like she's normal. <laughs> so what you need to do is be more reassurance. And if you're trying to be a good guy to her, don't be talking to multiple women if you're, if you're trying to date this girl. Because if she's like, I'm hesitant to date with you, and you're still talking to like six or seven other chicks on hooks... Listen, she's got every good reason to. Yeah. 
All right, this next one. Yeah. Yeah, at M5 Welding. If you want to talk to me, just book a call. Yes. you. I'm telling you. Don't, I don't charge for meeting you, man. You just have to put, though, if you want to talk to Rick. I know I keep saying this, but people don't do this. We have um, multiple guys that take calls. So. Yeah. So if you want to talk to Rick, you just have to put it in the comments. It'll say, like, it'll ask you a couple of questions. You can put it right at the top, like, want to talk to Rick. So that way we can flag it and make sure he gets it. Um, but I'm telling you, it'll say it's a 45-minute conversation. It's going to be an hour also. What? Can I request you stop saying that? Why? Well, what is the value in that? Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Is there a value in why you say that? I say it because people, I think, are surprised sometimes that it takes longer. They can also plan for it. So you're saying it's more value. Yeah. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. I, I was misunderstanding the way that you were saying it. Like, it, it sounded like the way that you would say it, like, wasn't nice. Like, I just am bad at scheduling or... No. I'm like, what do you, no. why do you say that? No. No. It, it's a good well, thing. You're saying because I care more than the... Yes. The, the, you take the okay. time, and sometimes you put so much effort into these calls. Just, this is who you are by nature. Okay. So, for them to expect to be on for an hour, so... If, Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I just, it. I misunderstood why you would say that. I was like, that, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty good on my calls here. His scheduling sucks. <laughs> He's no. terrible at time that's management. That's not what I'm it like, is. What's See, the value? When we talk about like adding things, it's good to clarify just like he did. Yeah. So we know. Just gotta okay. make sure. Yeah. Yeah, book a call. I'd like to I'd like to be able to meet you guys and see what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Um okay. Something hard. I can't read his name. <laughs> Snorlax, you're funny, dude. Chris, you're funny. You can be Cristobal on the next call. <laughs> um, okay, how would you tell your three kids you are separating? Note, oh, note, still in the same house in the bed because I don't have anywhere to go. Okay, there's more. Hold on. Arizona tweet. Um, they favor their dad. So how do you tell your kids? Oh, Arizona tweet. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, so how do you tell your kids you're going to get a divorce, still live together, but she also has nowhere to go? Mm. I would need more of the story to be able to, like, know how to ease that in. I don't know the people. I don't know the, the kids. Also, it depends on what age your kids are. I don't know the age of the kids. I don't know the dynamic. I don't know what you guys have done or not done in front of them. I don't, like, I mean, some people... If your kids are old enough and they see the toxicity of your relationship and you go, I don't think we're, we're very good together. They're like, we've been telling you that for years, mom. Like, I don't know your dynamic. Yeah. And so it's going to be tough. 19, 14, and 11. So they, they're older. They, they already know. Yeah, they probably. They, they, they know. <laughs> I don't. It's, They've seen. Yeah. So I think it's, it has to be done. It, this is what yeah. I would do in your situation. Um, oh, Albert, it's at the top uh, in our links. Go ahead and click the link, Albert. Is um, sit down as a family. Make sure you and your husband or whatever, um, if you can, hopefully you guys can agree on how to talk to the kids about it and make sure that you, the kids are going to want reassurance to know that the, that they're going to be okay, but also you guys will be okay too. And I think that's one of the biggest things and how things are going to change for them. I mean, and you're saying that they favor their dad. Um, you guys just have to be open and transparent with them and make them. I don't I think I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to say something a little controversial here. This day and age, over 50 percent of their friends have divorced parents. And so they're going to be like, oh, we already know, Dad. It's uh, two Christmases. We know like like it's almost all of their friends have divorced parents. I think this isn't 1962. You know, I, at this day and age, still, they're like. We know. I believe, we though, know. it's it, it's owed for the kid's sake. It doesn't matter what how many parents are getting divorced. It's a high percentage. It still needs to be that type of conversation for the kids. Sure. I'm just saying, like, to overcompensate for their lack of understanding. One of them's 19. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> they know. They may know, but sometimes hearing the news that your parents are splitting, it they don't take it well. And also, I've known grown kids that are older than 19 not taking it well at all and yes can they cope on their own better than the smaller kids yes do kids end up being resilient and bouncing back from this yes but you just have to make sure that you still stay solid for them sure again my answer still is i don't know you guys well enough yet to say how the dynamic would work 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what is done. I don't know why you're splitting. I don't know what the situation is. Um, I think that if it's toxic enough, the kids would be like, yeah, I've been, I would recommend you guys get a divorce. <laughs> like, I don't know the dynamic at all, though. So it's hard to say. I do not know. Mm. But I, I would say that, like, I'm, maybe I'm just, I would call it optimistic, but I don't look at divorces as negatively as some people do. I think if two people are terribly unhappy together and they're splitting up to at least have a chance to be happy yeah, again, I don't think it's the most terrible I, thing I in agree the world. with you for the couple's sake, for also the kids, too, to be in a healthier dynamic. Yeah. That's the part that I'm like, there just needs to be that transparency with the kids because kids don't, it does create initially a lot of chaos for kids if you're not careful because now they have two of everything you know and so just being able to navigate those conversations where you and him are on the same page i know if you're getting divorced that's not always going to be the case but i'm just saying what i would do i didn't have a chance to do that <laughs> and i had to I didn't have any conversation <laughs> yeah i yeah i hear what you're saying i think it's situational so like it would really be i don't know you guys well enough to say exactly how to do it because I don't know you two. Um, she's much better at adding this the hypothetical if it was her situation. Um, you know, you said 19 years in on this thing, like I just be, I think the kids will know just they, based on what they're saying. It's, you're making up like if you're in that situation, it doesn't seem like anything like your situation. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying the conversation. It's not a, it's it's no longer about the mom and the dad not getting along. It's about how do we now cope differently as a family? What does this mean for the kids? Because sure. too many people do not put their kids first um, when it comes to, especially when they're divorcing. They use the kids against each other. So, but that's still unhealthy parenting. I know not good. I, not talking to kids. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, so if you're a toxic person and you're or that person you're with is a toxic person, somebody is the asshole, like there's always one. Like somebody has either become or is the, the person who creates the problems. The kids know. I mean, if, they're, if they were six, eight, and 10, they would be like, we don't really understand. But at 19 and 14, they'd probably be able to give better relationship advice than you guys sometimes. <laughs> like, it's hard things, to say. Things change, I, it, it still needs to be a conversation. Sure. Because Especially Maybe. at 14. Are you thinking I'm saying don't tell them and surprise them? No, but I'm saying. <laughs> what are you trying to say? It needs to be a conversation. I'm saying I'm agreeing. I'm just They're going to have a lot of questions. Their lives can completely change. Like, listen, especially at their age. Like, does that mean I'm changing schools? Like, here's the thing. Not everybody thinks about this stuff when they go to get a divorce. They're like, I know I just don't want to be with him. Let's get a divorce. And then you're like, oh, wait, I didn't think about all the other things. Not saying that you should stay because of it. But I'm just saying, work through a game plan for your kids. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's what all, all I have to say about that. Again, okay. just my opinion. Thank you, You babe. can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Stay together for the kids. Don't do that. Don't do, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, or like Phil said, just throw it all in the front yard. Here, just Here's what I will say, Post though. it on Facebook. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I do want to do, I do want to give you some advice. Uh, Arizona, what Please. is it? Tweet. So, um, this is what I will say. Do not stay together for them. No, you can't. It, you, you can't do that. And it's easy for parents. Parents don't want to see, I get it. Like they're trying to protect you to mm. trying to protect the kids, try to protect everybody. At the end of the day, you have to do what's best for yourself. But moving to your parents' house, this is what I will tell you, because I believe this is how it is in most states. It's definitely the way that it is here. If you are the first one to leave, you forfeit the rights to the home. So just something to think about. You may not want to be the first one to be like, I'm out of here if you want to keep the house. That's all I got to say. That's something I learned. There you go. Don't lose your house. If you want to keep it, don't move out. <laughs> you make the other person move. And then throw their stuff on the front yard. Don't Just tell kidding. them this Just law. Just kidding. Yeah. They didn't watch this live for her. You win. <laughs> Damn it. Ah, so silly. Don't lose your house. You want to go bark at kids? Go ahead.
at what age would asking them how they are feeling and and doing help it says I think it's important any, any age yeah <coughs> any age any age yeah listen to them yeah I still ask my girls and I've been divorced for years I still make sure they're okay I never ask them about the divorce <laughs> uh, all right <clears throat> there's no men's housing shelters yeah stop there's only a few in the country man it's a true story actually there are almost 2800 of them for women and i think there's three two or three for men mm -hmm. so yeah there's a a huge discrepancy there for support for humans so that's true yeah um, Karen has a question how do I get my partner of 23 years that I am done with wait let me back up what, what? how do I get my partner of 23 years that I am done and he ignores it so basically she's telling him he's she's done and he doesn't believe her what am I missing there maybe maybe what are you hearing there what do you when you when you read that <laughs> She's been with this guy for 23 years. Sure. She's done. Okay. And she's telling him, and he was like, doesn't listen to her. Okay. So role, play, like, role play with me. You be her, I'll be her. Okay. Him. Listen, Ooh. we've been together for 23 years. Yes, I think we this have. is this is enough, and uh, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Nope. Hmm. Well, I really mean it. I'd no, I no. You're good. Oh. Well. I'm not listening. We're already good. No, for real. I'm done. Yeah, I already told you no. We're we're <laughs> we're staying. We're good. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna stay. Is that something like it's going? Because <laughs> I don't understand what I'm missing. <laughs> Karen, maybe. Yeah, go make. Go tell, some breakfast. Chris, go make some breakfast now. She shows up and he's like, "Still here, huh?" Well. You're like, I am done. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, what am I missing here? See how, see how bad things can go when you add stuff to people's conversations? <laughs> <laughs> He's so, like, left yet? Oh, still here? Great. If, if you're done, I don't understand. <laughs> go make lunch. What, what part about being done isn't done? Like, you're done. Go, I mean, get your stuff and start a new life, I guess. I don't, I don't know what you mean, but I don't know. <laughs> Karen, we might need a little more info. <laughs> Go be done. Go be go be done. I don't, I don't know what you're... Sometimes when we say things out loud, we're like, oh. And here, here's one thing we tell people, too. Yeah, you say you're done, but you're still... You keep showing up. You're still here. I'm done. I'm going yeah. to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, what right. do you mean by done? See you in the morning. I don't know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> we don't mean to make light yeah. of your of your real no, life and drama, but no, that's an interesting situation. Here, here's the other thing, too. Is that and I'm not saying Karen, this is your situation. This is completely separate. Okay, so Ooh, are we making up a new one? Um, yeah, I like to make up stories. Um, <laughs> at same time tomorrow. Oh my yeah, gosh, again. Five weldings. <laughs> same time tomorrow. Yeah. I'll be done again. But I've seen <laughs> people. I know have known of people that also say that same thing because they want, they expect a certain reaction. If they don't get that reaction, then that's something they keep doing. Yeah, I'm well, not saying this is Karen. It's, I'm it's, just saying it, it is fair happens. to say there's some sort of uh, assumption too, where like if I keep saying like I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, it's almost like waiting for the other person to be like then fine, let's cancel it. And be like, oh, you want to leave? That's not. I can't believe that you're leaving me. <laughs> you're like, but you said we're done two hundred times, but now you're really done. This isn't fair. <laughs> you know, like. You now because like you're like fine we're done you're like you're the bad guy like I don't really understand if you're done you're go done. be done like M5 Welding said well go be done <laughs> same time tomorrow like it, this is this is quite funny um, I think it's really hard to change what's become habit sometimes yeah well, it can be unless you um, adjust your reward system it's true. Phil says another trap. Whoa, is me card. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's 
Uh, that's probably not helpful at all, Karen. We don't really have <laughs> enough information to be able to give you an authentic answer. I hate answer. these people. Unfollow. Yeah. I'm really done. I'm like, we we know. Let's give, let's give Karen a group hug. We know, Karen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Sorry. I had to. I had to. She's probably not even on anymore. She's like, I canceled but you guys. Listen, yeah. <laughs> Isn't being done done as a habit? Like, it, everything can be construed as, as habitual, so could be. Misery is one of my most interesting addictions. <clears throat> what suggestions can you suggest going from abusive relationship to <laughs> non? Well. <laughs> More see. context, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we get one of these questions that it's like, "Oh, your beard is incredible." The beard says you're incredible. Yeah. Thank you, Marcus. Appreciate you. Let's see. What suggestions can you suggest going from an abusive relationship to non-abusive? Um, my suggestion for anybody who's been in any type of abusive relationship is go through the steps of healing yourself before you get into any relationship at all um, go through whatever like conversations or growth or counseling or therapy whatever you choose I don't care find some way to have a full healthy heart before you get into a new relationship you're only going to be taking all of your reactions and fears and all of your um, poor instincts and your your defense mechanisms into this new relationship of somebody who was not there for your abuse and they're going to have to navigate this minefield of your emotions because you never dealt with the stuff from leaving somebody else's damage and so i would say my advice is heal before you get into a new relationship and do not expect somebody else to save you from it yeah while not all the damage done to you is your fault, all the healing that you need to do is. Yeah. Um, thoughts on <clears throat> jealousy. Is it healthy to a point and how to control it? We have a different point of view on jealousy, I think. What's your opinion on jealousy? I had overcome my jealousy completely, but you still have more defenses against this stuff. What is your opinion on jealousy? Um, I don't know. You don't know your own opinions on jealousy? Well, I don't like it. I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't like... Yeah. I wouldn't like if he was jealous all the time. I also don't like when people try to make each other jealous on purpose. I don't like that. What's that mean? Like, flirt with somebody so you get yep. angry? Yep. Don't like that. It's rude. It's not jealousy. It's rude. It's rudeness. Chris, you said jelly is healthy. I don't know you said jelly. Jelly yeah. is healthy. Yeah. I don't know about jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, here's my opinion on jealousy. My opinion on jealousy is I don't, I don't have any jealousy, which was a big task for me because I'm an Aries man. And so generally, Aries men tend to be more jealous, a lot more aggressive, like don't talk to my girl, don't look at my girl, what are you looking at? Like they're really overly protective and get highly jealous if she's talking to somebody and I'm like who the hell was that guy you're talking to like it was the waiter he's getting us our drinks like oh, all right all right you didn't give a number right like I gave a number of drinks I want us to have what are you talking about like mm -hmm. being overly assertive or overly aggressive never served me it doesn't work um, I think it falls under standards the relatability here on this one is She's beautiful. She's a beautiful woman inside, out. She is a good personality, fun to be around, and she's just a good human being. And people are attracted to her. She looks super hot in this little shirt she's got right now. It's a good gig. This is a good thing. If people or guys aren't attracted or hitting on my girl, what's wrong with my girl? She's beautiful. People should be taking their shot. Now, the reason I don't have jealousy is because of my standards. My girl would never go home or try to be with another man. She just wouldn't do that. And if she ever shows any interest in being with another man, well, very simply by my standards, that must not be my girl. 
It's that simple. So if she shows me she's not trustworthy and would openly go and be with another person, well, what am I putting my, my time and my energy yeah. and my heart into with somebody who will openly throw it in the garbage? That's not something my girl would do, indicating to me that must not be my girl. So that's why I don't have any jealousy. Everybody can take their shots. Go for it. Feel free. That's my opinion. But this makes it so I do not have to be jealous. In fact, I can thank her for not wasting any more of my time. Yeah. I think he also knows, too, um, cheating or emotional, uh, che any type of cheating, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Cheating and monopoly, any of it. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. But cheating for me is, is an ultimate deal breaker. It is. Um, and so he knows how I talk about loyalty on here a lot and um, I am loyal to a fault sometimes with people um, especially in relationships so I always tell it like I I don't have that in me to go out and find somebody else I would just I would go so I I can't I can't yeah, yeah. yeah. cheating is a deal breaker yeah yeah, yes. Megan, I'm, I'm pretty sure. If you don't have trust, you don't have a relationship. No. <clears throat> That's just it. No. The question, I saw it, James, was, was it uh, James Lynn, how do you work with a Jezebel? I, I got to make sure that the word work is intended like you work at work with somebody who's like a Jezebel. And I think that's a terminology. It's like a girl who will, who's trying to sleep with you or trying to be with you when they're not supposed to be. Mm-hmm. No relationship. Maybe I'm missing I've been on and know. off for almost 20 years with no relationship. So, James, mm -hmm. is that what you're talking about? I can see I'm trying to follow your things here. Yeah. I also don't know Meg, HM, whatever. It is. Um, okay, so what if he did cheat? He ended it, wants to come home. So if you that's your situation, um, I would say to mm -hmm. you, first of all, I would ask you, what advice would you give your friend that was in the same situation? Yeah, you know the details. And... <laughs> Also, what does that look like going forward with you and being able to trust this person again? Um, that causes a lot of hard way, heartache and a lot of work. And so just be aware if you're doing it out of just maybe being lonely or the familiar, like being with someone that's a little bit more familiar. Um, I would say without even knowing you, you, you should probably move on. That's tough. I don't, uh, know, and, I don't know enough on the information yeah. to say whether there's hope or not. I don't know him. I don't know your story. I don't know. But that's a, that's a big deal. If he moved out, cheated and moved mm. out, and now wants to come home when things don't go right. You guys I, have to renew all your vows and sorry, have I'm absolute sorry. consequences. Yeah. You guys have to renew 100%. If anything even flirts with this direction, you're done, done. But I don't... Them out. But I don't, yeah. I don't know what his, what's, what's the incentive okay. that you have to like bring him back? Are there kids involved or something, or what are you trying to do? Like I don't, why would you have somebody who you can't trust, be somebody you'd put your heart back into again? Yeah. But um, also, I don't know how long he was cheating on you. If it's a one night stand, that's a very different thing than a three year relationship. Yeah. So I don't know how long. I don't know what it is. Yeah, and was it just, yeah, there's a lot <clears> of questions there. Oh, M5 Welding, thanks for hanging out, man. We have booked a call. I'd love to talk to you. It'd be good to just make sure you put your name in the link so I know it's you. Like the M5 Welding part so I know who, who you are. Casey J. Ron says, once a cheater, always a cheater. A lot of actual good guys out there. Let's see there somebody are. else. There he is, 40, 4088. Good to see you, man. Um, says, I don't believe that. It's a big opinion for a lot of people. I also do not believe once a cheater, always a cheater. I do believe there's a point where people realize yeah. mistakes and they change their behavior. I yeah. believe people can evolve out of bad behavior. Yeah. All of it. This goes for addictions. This goes for poor choices. Yeah. Um, it goes for just any type of bad behavior. At some point, people learn their lesson and they go, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying everybody gets this quickly. Some people have to do repeat offenses. And that's true, too. But I think that at some point, most people can evolve out of being shitty. <laughs> like, for their own sake. <laughs> like, they'd have to. Yeah. 
So I don't believe, I don't personally believe that all people are stuck in whatever it is that their behavior was at some point. I think that at any point people can stop. <clears throat> But mm-hmm. I think that it's, uh, it's, there's, That's, there's probabilities. That's yeah. All. And somebody else, this is a fair statement. I've cheated. Then years later, I got cheated on and felt it and would never do that to someone again. Yeah. Ever. Sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. yeah. You get to see both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. That's called, I think some people call that karma. It is karma. <laughs> it is karma. Yeah. He ended the affair months before I ever found out. She was mad. He didn't leave me. And clued me in. Uh, that means there was probably a lot more there than just a one night deal. In which case he was pursuing a relationship with somebody else. I, I don't understand necessarily what you've got going on where you you're going to start a relationship based without trust. Yeah. Without trust and Megan, real talk. Tell me what you have in a relationship to be successful if you don't trust each other. Mm-hmm. I am very open to hear like the qualities that you would be like, well, this is the reason it would be good yeah. if you don't trust each other. I'm very I also, curious. If I can ask a question too, Megan, how long were you together before this happened? Yeah, Megan, that here's what I will tell you. Um, if you were if you were my friend, and again, this is just my opinion. Oh, you weren't married yet. Oh, year yet, and it lasted nine months. I would say to you, no, like I I would not invest in someone that when you get got married, they had an affair. In what the is honeymoon that, phase. What does that say? No. No, no, no. Well, no. Imagine, it will, imagine if it, if you guys went through some real no, shit. No, it doesn't matter. And <laughs> to be honest with you, Megan, mostly online, that's how most people cheat these days. Well, they only um, saw each other five times in person. No. Megan, no. If you were my friend, I'd be at your house being like, listen, we're going to get through this. Figure out your you values. You are not going to do this. <laughs> you are better than this because this will be your life. I, it just will be. I'm yeah. Figure out your values and your standards. Understand what your worth is. And right now, it sounds like you've never done any type of a value assessment to know what your worth is. If you're mm-hmm. trying to compromise even the most core loyalty that you have yeah. in dismantling trust in order to be with somebody. We had that video that says, don't connect or bring <laughs> toxic people back into your life just because you're no. lonely just like you shouldn't drink poison just because you're thirsty. So as far as that one goes, I don't think that it's a good idea for you to put your heart all in on somebody who... No. Like the the point, please, the point is five times, five times going to see another person means that they were already habitually lying to you. I know I hear you. Higher standards than this. But therapy has been beneficial. Listen, you know what? We have spoken. We have given our opinion. This is obviously your choice. Um, If you think that he has been cured and exercised all his demons, and this is the best place for you to put your heart, and that, you know, that behavior, not a big deal, it is your choice, of course. So, um... Have fun. I hope you guys do well. So, truth be told, I hope that he has learned his lesson and all things are cured and you guys are healthy. So, good luck. Godspeed to you. Can I speak on my opinion? Mm, I think it's best if we don't. (laughs) So, good luck to you. You No worries. Yeah, I really kind of actually skirted out of my opinion. Do you believe women can have a man best friend? No. The man used to want to date her. No. I said no. Oh, yeah, good job. Yeah. Um, no. No, I don't think that that's a good idea if somebody who wants to date your girl is their best friend. Um, that means he's just trying to be next in line if you ever mess up. 
Nope. He's hoping you guys don't do well, so he can let, he can he can be there and scoop up that baby bird and be the shoulder she cries on, and then maybe lays down in his lap. Nope. So nope. Good call. You were right. Yeah. Nope, not good. But yeah, I actually, um, Chris, I did watch Patrice O'Neill, rest in peace. Um, his stuff was hilarious, very funny. Um, he was on the hardcore side of stuff, but funny perspectives, probably right in most of it. <clears throat> mm. And that's why she's my ex. <laughs> You're funny, man. <laughs> that Rivers Lewis, 27, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <clears throat> R.I.P. Mr. P. Mm-hmm. His red pill was goat. That's funny. Yeah. <clears throat> as far as red pilling stuff goes, like I know a lot of people get into that. I think I'm a, I'm not very far over into the red pill so i think there's value in the scenarios but i know some guys have gone full MGTOW and gone in the direction what does this look for what does that mean i'm just i just was curious to see where you were saying you were at with that and you said i've just kind of like put my toe in the water and i'm like interesting what did you make up there? No, nothing. I just, that's interesting because I think you're a little bit more red pill than what you say. Really? Yeah. Well, okay. You are assuming things. I would love to hear your assumptions. No, we can't do it on here. We'll have oh. to do it after <laughs> because I know the conversations we have. I actually, I really am curious on what you have <laughs> created for me here. <laughs> I'm just going back to conversations. Where I, I know where I stand. I'm just going back to our conversations. <laughs> he seems more purple pill. More purple pill. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate you. Is that cake, jo cake J. Ron? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, appreciate you on that one. I think I'm probably <laughs> more purple pill. <laughs> that's my favorite color, so you can be purple. Sure. What's a red pill scenario that you are talking about? You're talking a out. Surrounded more grounded. Talking well. about probably missing a, a letter there. Um, there's some red pill scenarios like I, I think that Rich Cooper on some things does make good points, but sometimes goes way farther than I agree with. Um, one of the ones that I do see where women these days I know that we have a lot of uh, well not a lot but we have certain women trying to defend the hot girl summer phases and being able to go through and, and rack up their body counts real high because you know equal equal and I think that it is one of those things where they want to be non-traditional until it's time to be traditional and so when women's value is like the burden of beauty is high they'll go and and rack up their body count with a lot of guys and give it away for free. And then once they're ready to settle down, they want to find a high value man who will pay a premium for what she used to give away for free when she had a higher value. And I don't make the rules on that one. I just kind of agree that that's not maybe the best behavior for being able to, you know, share your value with a high value man is being a woman who will sleep with a lot of men. You know, and so I don't think that raises your value. That's just as a man's opinion. I don't make the rules. It just seems to be, that's the thing. <laughs> and if a woman's got burden of beauty and beauty fades over time and she just gives herself to a lot of guys, no problem. You can have all the hot girl summers you want, but I wouldn't understand a high value man paying a premium then at that point. Yeah, it's the hypergamy stuff. I just don't, I don't know if that necessarily is the best strategy. Uh, just because there is the Genghis Khan syndromes, there are the things where guys don't want women who have been with a lot of men. And they don't. I don't make the rule. In, in fact, I think women were the ones who were far more judgmental to women about it until just this last generation. Like, I think right around the 70s is when a lot of those judgments started to shift. But before then, women were the ones that judged other women. Yeah, women judge women harder than men, men will ever. Yeah. yeah. And so, if you, if you guys think about it, <laughs> like, women were the ones who kind of made the rules on it. So, that's kind of where, where it goes. Roll Tide. <laughs> that's awesome. 
There you go. Yeah. But uh, as far as that goes, I think that I agreed with that sentiment. It's, it doesn't make sense to give it away for free. And then when it's time to settle down, charge somebody a premium for, you know, and the women didn't like the term, but used goods. You have been like, you have a high body count now and you didn't treat it as a valued commodity. But now once everybody has gotten a turn, now you want someone yeah. to pay a top dollar for it. I don't agree. <clears throat> but here's something too that I, I would say like the women weren't considering. Women are attracted to a man who is sought after. So if a guy has more options, women are more attracted to the guy who has options versus guys who have no options. I don't make that rule. Women choose that. They would rather have the, all my friends think this guy is hot. Well, I want him. And if he chooses her, she would be like, heck yeah, I got the hot guy all the girls want. But if it was the other way around, and like it's the, the girl that, you know, has been with all the guys and she gets to just choose who, all the guys that she goes through. Guys are like, I don't want to mess with that. Mm -hmm. It's not my thing. Guys will turn it down. Not all. The bottom guys would s screw a hole in the wall. So that's different. But guys who have value and value themselves aren't trying to be with a woman who's been with everybody that they know. Even if she's hot. <coughs> all right, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> he agrees. His dog is vomiting facts. <laughs> and so, I don't make the rules on that one. It just seems to be the way it plays out. Is that red pill? I think it's more observational versus red pill, but I just see that's what it is. <laughs> see, I'm holding out for a secret weapon. Looks unassuming, but he's he's a strong man. I don't know, I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know either. I'm up, Phil. I don't know. <laughs> Dog down, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's just throwing up. I guess I don't know. All right, baby, we've got a couple hours here so far. What are you? Uh, what are you thinking? Two Let's hours. Do a little bit more. You got more it's in Tuesday you? night. We have some people on. Okay. Got a sister that has had. Oh, 10 marriages? No. Mm -mm. You can't be right. No, I don't think so. 10 that's... marriages. Wait. <laughs> Wait. You're you right. Say... There can't be a true bond. <laughs> Wait, did you say your sister has been married? 10 times? 10 times. Wow. Oh. How do women argue versus men? I think it's just how people argue. I don't know if it's necessarily a woman-man thing. I think I've seen argument styles be similar on both sides. Mm -hmm. So I think it's personality types more than men versus women. Yeah. <clears throat> it depends. Um, well, Snore likes what we're doing. Well, I guess it's the first date. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I am McCoy. I'm just going to call you McCoy. Seriously, 10, ten marriages. Like, I'm. I am. <laughs> Very intrigued. She has your sister. You've been to ten weddings for your sister. No, you have not. Like, you're That's like, the most I've ever heard of anyone getting married. Married, married ten, ten times? times? Is she rich? Right. <laughs> <laughs> how many? She got alimony yeah, from yeah, how yeah. many? <laughs> is she just going through and snagging up retirement plans? Like, what is she doing? <laughs> Nobody's got to know. Wow. Wow. I'm in, I'm, With all I'm those rings. Here. Yeah. yeah, I don't believe that. I don't know if it's 10. No, Going it's on 11. not. Shut no, up. it is not. <laughs> no, can you please just DM us a wedding picture from each wedding? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone stop her. Why is she why is she still going? Stop getting married. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can date without getting married. Yeah. Right? What are you doing? That's boy? like her hobby. <laughs> I it's got to be a record. I don't. Yeah, it's amazing. How, How many, many kids? kids? That's one a great with question. each. <laughs> got What's one, her age? What the fuck one, is this? <laughs> one. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. What's up, Amy? All right. Are men able to focus on one thing? Example, job, relationship, not both. 
Um, we can compartmentalize. The thing is, is we're going to be far more comfortable in one than the other because one, we can control the way we handle the situation and do our job. On the other, we've got you. And so we have no clue how to make you happy or what's going on. And it seems to keep changing. So we don't know what is the right thing to do, how to be good. Everything's changing. Your time of the month can make it so you wish I was beta or you wish I was alpha. Everything keeps changing. I wish that it made some sense. <laughs> so for work, guys seem to have it down. We've always worked. Relationships during this time frame, within the last, gosh, I'd say 50 years, we have changed the rules for relationship because now women have way more opportunity than they ever had. And some are doing well with it. And some are extremely reckless with this new ability. And it's making it so men are trying to do what is the right thing. And there are no established rules to make it so it works yet. So what's happening is that people have gone extremely progressive. It's imploding on itself. And people are now tr desperately trying to get more to a traditional dynamic. So is it hard for a guy to be able to focus on one thing? The way we're wired is to focus highly on one thing at a time. But with this one relationship thing, the rules are completely different and nobody has it down yet. So we're trying to figure it out as the first generation of humans doing this dynamic and how to make it work. Mm -hmm. What's up, Hoosier Plumber? All right, can a woman get over a 27 year man, man narcissist marriage <laughs> relationship to be happy with a new high value person guy i'm assuming oh yeah <laughs> um is it possible yeah but you're gonna have to make sure like i'm just real talk for you i'm just gonna real talk you for real if you're bringing 27 years of being destroyed by a narcissist into a dynamic looking for a high value man he will if you bring any of that trash into that dynamic any man who has high values has understanding of himself doesn't have to settle doesn't have to deal with nonsense doesn't have to repair you doesn't have to fix all your problems doesn't have to give you all the things that that guy screwed up or put your pieces back together a high value man would not choose somebody who's bringing this many problems into a dynamic a high value man is looking for a woman who can complement each other's life not bring more complications into his so those guys, the guys who have, you know, the, the looks, the money, the time, the energy, the knowledge, they have their stuff together, they have goals and dreams and ambitions, they have options, aren't going to settle for somebody who causes just drama all the time. <clears throat> so what I would probably say, and even just by some of the way that you're asking the questions, it does seem like you still are holding on to a lot from that dynamic whatever his thing is because you're talking about his trauma i don't care about his trauma if you're coming into a new relationship and you keep talking about your ex this is the sign that says you shouldn't be in a new relationship because if you've got like the pain and trauma from a narcissist tearing you down completely and just ripping everything that you are about yourself to pieces. This is if you were with an actual narcissist, by the way, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Nine out of 10 times people are misdiagnosing this. If you were with a true narcissist for 27 years, mm -hmm. I'd be surprised within three to five years of deep counseling that you would even figure yourself out. Now, if you were with just a guy who had issues and called him a narcissist, there's hope. But if you're with an actual narcissist, my father falls right under clinical narcissist. My mom, after 20 years, has just broken that curse. So it's not like we broke up now. 27 years of a narcissist tearing your psyche to pieces. You wouldn't even yeah. know who you are anymore. Um, KB Journey, let me ask you a question. Do you mean that you're working on your traumas together with your ex or someone new? I just want to clarify. If you're working through narcissist traumas with somebody, you're probably going to be doing more damage to it your new person. sounds like, from what I'm gathering, it's with you're dating someone new and he also has trauma. 
from his ex as well. So you both have trauma starting in a relationship is kind of what I'm gathering. Someone new. Eek. Okay. Listen, if you're working through 27 years of narcissist behavior with somebody new, I would really take a really close inventory on how much damage you're actually doing to this new person. And if they're bringing their trauma, has anything like that to bring to you, you two are going to start off with both of you being connected by trying to help the other person get better. But at this point, this is like two crippled people teaching each other how to be uncrippled. Like you may, you may have a fairy tale idea that you guys are rehabilitating with each other. More than likely, you're just putting your damage on him and he's putting his damage on you and you guys are calling it healing. What happens when you guys are doing better? Or what happens when he's doing better and you're still working through your stuff? Now what type of relationship is it? Oh, he'll just keep doing it for me forever. No. Your entire relationship is based on being broken. Real talk, if you were with a real narcissist, if you're not healed, don't get in a relationship. You're only going to do harm. There is no middle ground here. You're going to do more harm than good. Now, I'm well aware of the way coping mechanisms and not being lonely and all of the things that you are going to justify, all of the fairy tale endings that you already have planned out in your head, how you two will be perfect together because they understand you because they've been through a lot of pain too. No, you're going to do more harm to each other than good. And if you both do even end up healing through it, you won't even know who each other are. So you're going to have to go on new dates because whoever the healed version of you two is has nothing to do with the old stuff. Yeah, it Uh, takes many years. If you were with 27 years of narcissistic reprogramming, it takes... I've, I've seen it take years and years and years on this one. And if you're still talking about it, if you're still talking about it, you're not over it. You're not. I, I, I would, um, I would I'd just put my caution in there. I'm glad That's that you both have, have worked on it. Um, <clears throat> and you both aren't, I guess, I'm glad that you both didn't meet and then said, oh, let's start working on it together. It sounds like the two of you have been working on this for years separately. And now you guys are together. So... I hope I hope you guys figure it out. The odds are not in your favor, but there are exceptions to rules. I hope that you guys are the exception. Yeah. I really do. Why is it so hard to find happiness for myself, but always finding ways to make my family happy? Matthew, it's because I don't know what your definition of happiness is. So, let's see what you're looking for, Matthew. Let's give you a shot here, bud. All right. It's hard to find happiness. If you've ever found happiness before, please tell me what it is. I'm excited to hear your answer. So, Matthew, until you put your definition of what you found as happiness, we'll jump to some other questions. Let's see. Hurt people, hurt people moment? Most Mm -hmm. likely. After being betrayed, when do you learn to trust anyone again? Trust is a choice. As soon as you believe that you can trust someone again is when you can trust someone again. That's as simple as, as the answer gets. If you believe that I'm okay, Mm -hmm. I've been through enough stuff that if I trust again and it goes wrong, I've been through it before, so I'll get through it again. And as soon as you have that type of confidence and courage, then you can trust again. If you believe that everyone's going to hurt you and betray you again, then you won't. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you believe you can is when you can. That's really the answer. I think, I think the other part, too, is, is being able to understand that once you've been betrayed, what are the triggers that um, you have? So when you get into a new dynamic, you don't continue to call it the same thing as what you had before. Force it to fit? Yeah. Yeah. Matthew, I guess I asked that wrong. <laughs> I'll figure out a better way to ask that. Well played, sir. I think <clears throat> I know what you're saying, Matthew. It's if we're not just focusing on the words, but he puts other people before himself, specifically his family. Uh, I, have, I I'm actually want him to reword the question because it may be completely different than the way he worded that. So, Matthew, I'm actually I'm authentically interested to hear your question. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what are key differences between narcissism and inner child wounds? 
So there's a big difference, like a massive difference. And this is uh, this is where I need you guys to be careful about getting caught up on just the website stuff or watch real real talk, TikToking, where people all start giving their opinions of the definitions of things. True narcissism is a is a pretty decent list, but there's also I think like seven to eight different types of narcissism. The things they have in common is they will take everything that you have and bleed you dry in different tactics. They will take and take and take and take until you have nothing left and then blame you again with no accountability mm -hmm. and n no recourse, no it's borderline sociopaths. I have no regret, no care, no concern that you have given everything and I'll just tell you how it wasn't enough. Right, but I do know too <clears throat> that there are parts of certain types of narcissism is is due to trauma from when someone was younger too. I do know that. That's true. But I mean like it's not, inner child wounds is a different thing. Yeah. It, it doesn't necessarily mean it's exclusive. It'd be kind of like the circle chart where this is narcissism, right? this is inner child One wounds, the but there's a tiny little sliver of overlap where this becomes, this is where narcissists come from. The behavior itself is curable. I actually have a dude <laughs> who does fall under narcissist personality disorder who is overcoming it. So it's possible, but they have to have a rock bottom moment to reprogram and he's doing great, but it is a difficult reprogramming system because I have to dismantle his entire belief system and then rebuild it in a healthy way. And he's like, man, I was poisoned. You're like, you were, you were poisoned, dude. He's like, oh my gosh, just my regular thinking is poisonous. I'm like, yes. So we're <clears throat> deleting systematically the way his belief system was put together. But now he's building up his family and building his wife and atoning for his mistakes and doing better every day. So it's possible to do that, but it, you know, it's not the same always as somebody who has like a tough childhood or has been through trauma or has been wounded or has gone through really difficult upbringing. It's not necessarily gonna be the result of narcissism. It would just be a small percentage of that become narcissists as a survival mechanism or because they've gotten away with manipulating situations. But it's not, it's not common. It'd be like, I really would think it'd be like a two to three percentile that become narcissists from childhood wounds. Most people, you know, end up finding defense mechanisms to survive. You know, they close off or they get aggressive or they'll figure out some way to go into a survival mode more than narcissism. And so that's where I would say that's where I see the difference. But true narcissist is very rare. Like it's not common. It's not mm -hmm. as common as the trigger word is getting thrown around. Yeah. That's for sure. <clears throat> Hopefully that helps. That's a tough, tough question to throw in a live, really. Narcissists are forgivable? How so? If anything is forgivable when somebody has um, the willingness to try to be better. It's really the missing piece. When people hold on to their problems as more valuable than the solutions, there's not really anything you can work with there. But if people go, I need to atone and change because this does not serve who I want to be anymore, mm -hmm. then there's room for forgiveness. Yeah. They seem to be similar. People confuse the two. It's, like I said, there's, it's easy to do it. I think that hurt people aren't necessarily narcissists though. More people are just hurt than narcissists. You know, but I think that people are trying to take, in, in real talk, is Victoria, real talk, all of us, all of us, you, me, her, everybody has narcissistic traits. We all do. We take care of ourselves. We do believe we're important. We do selfish things sometimes. Sometimes we won't notice the damage we're doing to others. Sometimes we try to avoid accountability. We all have narcissistic traits, but we're not clinical narcissists. And so if you take one or two things somebody did because you didn't like it and then you stamp it narcissist, wrong. Some people just do shitty shit, <laughs> like sometimes. But it doesn't mean they're a narcissist. It just means they're just being a dick to you. So it's hard to say, like, narcissist, narcissist, narcissist. Everyone's a narcissist if you just go by one or two traits. 
We all are. Yeah. I work out. This means I care about my physique. I'm a narcissist. She wears makeup. She tries to look pretty, so she's a narcissist. Like, she did her hair today, thinking about only herself when she did her hair. Narcissist. Like, you're like, slow down, please. <laughs> yeah. Slow, yeah. Please slow down. <laughs> like, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it gets, it's getting way overused. It's yeah, not correct. Yeah, everybody's using it. It's, it's not correct. It's a very rare thing. But Victoria, thank you for opening Pandora's yeah, box that's there. That's great. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, I just watched your video. I'm wishing you the expectations of us. The now and it really hit home, bro. Thanks. Appreciate uh, you, brother. Beyonce just said the same thing to me and moved on to what she thinks is better after she got everything from me to build herself up. It's so irritating. Brutal, bro. Ugh. So this is why I'm saying, and this is the, the, the hard part about it, I know that there's a lot of women who go, men have been doing this for years. Ugh. I don't think it's the same. The, here's the difference. You want to know what the difference is? Is the guys that this is happening to are good guys. These are the good guys, the guys who are like, I'll give everything. I'll put you first. I'll make it so everything that you have, I will sacrifice yeah. and I will push you up. I will help you get everything for you. Whatever you need, babe. Equality, let's do it. You want to lead the family? Let's go. Women as a leader, it's time. You'll be better nurturers, more empathetic. You're going to take care of me just like I would take care of you. Money's no issue because now we can both make money. Leadership, women can lead just as good as men. Let's do it. We're with you. Pro equal. Go women. And the women go, yeah, thanks for building me up. But now that I'm built up, I got way more options now. I'm taking them. And they're going, what the fuck? Yeah. What just happened? I was just on your team. I, I literally just, I didn't pursue my dreams so I could help you get yours so that we could, we could be great. I, what happened? I just thought that you would do what I would do. And now you just left for another guy. I helped you get your law degree. I took care of the kids so that you could you could have your law degree and you could be a lawyer and I believe in you and your dreams and I'm helping you. And now you're dating like one of the top lawyers at the firm and I'm just a house husband. That's exactly it. He's like, the worst part is she left me for my best friend on top of it all. Bro. Oh, prayers God. to you. What is, oh. <laughs> Man, that's a heavy day, man. You lost your best friend. And, and, and the girl you invested everything in in one day? I don't understand that. Ladies, ladies, you need to stop women from doing this. Please. For your own sake. Yeah. Ladies, stop women from being bad women. Us guys, I'm letting you know, us guys, real men, do not like guys doing shitty things to people. So as women, stop women taking the freedom and the ability that people are giving yeah. for them to be great and using them this recklessly. <clears throat> stop. Please. Yes. Please. Let's look out for yes. each other. And it is. Um, and I, I do see this a lot with, with women do this. When something's not going right in a relationship and the woman's like, I think I'm going to leave. And then there's like a crowd of people cheering her on. Yeah, do it. You don't need him anyway. You got it, girl. Get I yours. just was in getting coffee the other day at this place. And the, it literally was happening with five girls. I was messaging him. I was like, listen to this. And I just hit record. And um, it was awful. It took everything in me to not say something. I'm like, Andrea, not your place today. Don't do it. But I couldn't believe it. I'm like, as women, we should want the best for our people, right? For other women, right? That doesn't always mean just throwing away a relationship or doing harm to the other person that's been there. We shouldn't be treating each other like that, especially when it's in a relationship. And then going to be with another guy that's a friend, like it's it's almost like it was, the conversation I heard that day was almost like a an attack to like get him. And it was like, what is what is happening? You guys are getting your shot at equality. You're getting your shot to lead. You're getting your shot to be treated with respect. You're getting your shot now that women have fought for. Women have fought and even died for you to have the right 
to lead and be a good leader and show us how to do it the right way and and kick ass and do all the great things and then it's turned into just yeah. selfish <laughs> hate fests and you're like what yeah. this this stuff was given yeah please treat it with more <laughs> respect than you are and River, I think you're you're right because we've witnessed this, but women want others that are going to be agreeable to them. Mm -hmm. And there's been many moments when I have not been agreeable with other women and they do not like it. So you're absolutely right with that. Yeah. They want to be told, it's okay, it'll be fine and encourage you. But I believe a true friend will be able to challenge them in those moments to say, listen, maybe look at it this way. Did you see it maybe a different way not just cheering them on for doing some harm to another person like mm -hmm. i i've <clears throat> seen it too yeah it's it's not good and um so, yeah all these I, I, so in these uh, scenarios ladies don't abuse the abilities that have been given from other people fighting for your ability to have them don't abuse them this way and then for my guys out there and not even my guys just for the guys out there if you're a best friend don't fuck your friend's wife don't do that like, I'm just going to simplify it for you. It makes my dog throw up. <laughs> Don't screw just, your buddy's mm -hmm. wife ever. Like, if you were ever curious, like, maybe I could hook up with my best friend's wife. Let me just go ahead and just take that off your table forever. You can never, ever sleep with your best friend's wife. I don't care what problems they're having. You have your boys back always. And that's it. Please. Remove the thought of sleeping with your best friend's wife. It's poor choices Wouldn't... all the way around. <laughs> Never do that. Ever. There are certain people, when people date or whatever, you can go like, hey, you dated for two months, it didn't work out. Mind if I take a shot? Sure. If you were in a long relationship yeah. or if they ever got married, that person for you is off limits forever. That will never yep. be one you should try to no. sleep with. Ever. This is, this is why I don't this trust is, people. Well, it's guy code. <laughs> this is guy code. And these guys right. should know guy code. Right. That's not, man code does not, we don't, our, my men do not operate this way. Just so you ladies want to know, my men do not try to sleep with their best friend's wives. That is poor choices. Do not destroy everyone's dynamic because you want to have sex with somebody who where you have options. There are plenty of women. But you they go to where it's easy. You That's don't, the problem. It may not and even be easy. This was just one that was there for so long. I can't stand it. It should be absolutely never. Okay, so let me ask you. We have never, I don't think we've ever had this conversation, actually. And maybe we have, but it's been a long time, so I don't remember. But I changed my answer. Slashes tires, yeah. No, yeah, no, listen. No slashing I, tires. I, <laughs> and throw the stuff in the yard, like Phil said. Yeah, um, Go carry yeah that's underway. also not a partner to your point. It's it's not. It is, it is not. Uh, okay. What's your, what's your conversation? I'm curious. So, these situations are happening a lot, right? And um, this also happened when I was married. After I found out he cheated, the person down the street was like, I thought I heard something and kind of wondered, which really was she knew the whole time. What is your, I guess my question is, if someone else knows that this is going on, do you feel like that person should come and tell the person that's been cheated on or not say anything at all? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's so situational. Um, you know what? A real talk. I would say that person's picking a side. People have to pick a side at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. So it depends yeah. on which person they choose. Um, I'll tell you right now, in certain dynamics, if I'm closer with the dude and I know that, you know, he's doing some shady shit, I probably wouldn't get involved. That's not my place to get involved in their dynamics, so I shouldn't be ratting him out because so, I probably wouldn't be involved in that situation. So then let's say this. Let's say, though. So, all right, let's do it yep. the same way. If you have um, one of your best friends and she happens to be talking to another guy and you know the relationship isn't great and you're like, you should probably tell your husband like you don't want to be with him anymore and yep. you're giving him good advice. Let's just say you're doing this. Let's just say you're doing it. Would you go and meet with her husband 
to spill her beans. No, but I would tell her, you either say something. You already or... did. Let's say you said all the right things to her, but yeah. she's like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm having my cake and eating it no. too. He pays my bills and I, would... I get to have this. You would go to the husband. I would. I would. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. How many people in your old neighborhood did you go do this with? What do you mean? Because you knew people who no, were I didn't. doing this. No, I, I didn't until I found out. You mean telling me you didn't know anybody's didn't, stuff? Not one Never. thing. Never no knew. No guy ever nope. approached you or nobody, no guy ever said, hey, I'd like to I take a shot. kept to myself. You know I did not really get into whatever else they had going on. You, I kept babe, my distance. I babe, also worked real, a lot. I talk. swear to God, I didn't. You swear to God. Yep. You knew nobody was doing anything. Nope, I didn't. When, when you told me, you knew people even approached you because or propositioned you inappropriately. No. No. It. No. Not until, not until I was separated did stuff start coming out about other people. <laughs> right. This is like Michael Jackson. So that is what happened so no and if i did i would if i was friends with them i would say something if i don't know these people and their acquaintances i don't care what they do with their lives that's them but if it's a close friend i will speak up because i know what it feels like to have it done to me will not no i would say something i would say something yeah i think it depends on the dynamic I okay really so this is my question so okay. if you had a really good friend right sure and he's cheating on his his wife okay right you said you're not going to say anything to her, right? If I was, if it's my really good friend, your, she, that means guy. she's not my really good friend. Okay. I wouldn't but be you, like you, hanging you out with her. You've known this couple for a while. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to their house and like you're having like cookouts and stuff with them, and you're hanging out with them as a couple, knowing this information, and you still don't say anything. I I don't. First off, we don't have any friends like that. Well, we're speaking hypothetically. I'm, well, I'm trying to put myself in this position that we probably would never be in. So I'm trying to like understand. If you like, don't want to say anything. You should take me with you. You can say whatever you want. Say. That's fine. No, I'm really trying. I'm really trying to give your your question yeah. some credit here. I'm, like, really, I'm really curious. I'm really yeah. trying here. Like I'm gonna be going to cookouts with their family, knowing that he's yes. got like his side girl on the side, and like pretend like everything is going great i i would probably really recommend like dude like don't i would i would be all over him on like i don't agree with your your decisions and your behavior and i'd keep pushing on him yeah you know but as far as like any expectation anybody would ever put on me to start telling wives what what other guys are doing or a friend's business mm -hmm. it's not my business yeah that's fair it's just not that's i can fair. i can be there and tell my boy what i think is is best for him as far as just overall health and how much damage he's about to do to his wife and how much this sucks and it, I would say bail on this thing before you get caught because you're yeah. gonna like I would say this is not gonna go good but I'd have to keep trying to have his back that's where I would have my loyalties because the real talk is no matter what happens with his inevitably going to end marriage mm -hmm. he's still my boy more than she's gonna be my girl mm-hmm I wouldn't be like, hey, you guys split. I'm hanging with the wife. No, I wouldn't. right. You would go with your, yeah, I get it. So yeah. I wouldn't have her back because I wouldn't have any benefit with that. I would mm -hmm. be hanging with the guy because after it splits, I'd be trying to help him get his shit together. Yeah. Because that's, that's a, a good, good friend. Yeah. You and said I, I good think, friend, by the yeah. way. Not just dude I know. Right. Like you said good friend, yeah. I would have his back. Yeah. I guess, and, and maybe this is coming from me because I, I wish someone would have spoke up and said something and I didn't have that. So I think part of me was like, I wish I would have had that like two years prior. That would have saved me a lot of time. So I think from my perspective, I wish someone would have said something because they well, did know. Who were your girlfriends that were good friends who didn't have your back then? Well, I wasn't really close with, well, it was a situation where people were gathering around. So that's what it was. Who was your good like good friend okay none of them out there in the neighborhood were That's, but, no, but here's no, the difference hold, hold here's on. the difference time, time out before no, you justify here's time out if you didn't have any really close yeah. friends to have your back you cannot create an expectation that people would well, put their neck, <laughs> people would put their neck out Let's, 
for right. somebody who is not their friend. This is this is why I still feel this way, is because it was known that this person mm. that did know couldn't stand my ex-husband. But they also don't want to get involved in somebody else's marriage well, and Well, I just wish they would have. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but if you wanted people to be loyal with you, you'd have to be friends with them. No, I would. If it was a close friend, yeah, I get it. So if just, you had no close friends, you can't not, expect not close friend no behavior. Way. Yeah, I get it. I wouldn't. Yeah, I guess that is an expectation that I wish I would have had that. Yeah, so that was kind of like you deliberately distance yourself <laughs> well, from everybody yeah. and then I, want everyone to be my close friend for me? Yeah. No. Not a close friend, just someone to be like, hey. They're not going to get involved in other people's hey. terrible marriages. Well, no different than somebody who doesn't really know us. Let's, let's just say people who don't really know us very well and yeah. we're like, and let's say you were being abusive to me. You were the person who hits me and screams at me and yells at me. Yeah. How many people do you think who aren't really close with us would get in the middle? Yeah, no, you're right. They'd be like, oh, thank God that's not our marriage. Ooh, we're doing better than those people. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He should go, but that's not our marriage, so good luck to him. Right? Yeah. The people don't get involved in other people's business, so they wouldn't. Were you admitted to your loss or not knowing? Um, I think it was as soon as I separated. Um, I think it was more than. I think it was more honestly. If I'm being super transparent, I think it was more mad at myself for not seeing all of the red flags mm -hmm. along the way. What? Oh, McCoy's thing that he was saying. He says he knows a TikTok. Um, he knows a guy. He, he's on TikTok. He's. Uh, live talking about his wife leaving him now for his brother-in-law so like it's just crazy watching this stuff happen his brother-in-law that's two marriages ruined in one leave damn damn mm. what's up with people people are making very difficult choices these are not good k boone 0069 bro my heart's out to you man yeah. These are these are suck situations. They are. And McCoy, you're entertaining as hell, dude. I'm glad you're around. <laughs> That's the sister getting married eleven times guy. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine Christmas time. Yeah, oh imagine that, right? Oh my god. I have a feeling they don't have Christmases together yeah. anymore. Thanks Thanksgiving, they have their own thing going. Because <laughs> the whole family's like, fuck them. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> it makes sense. I know a lot of women who are upset over time rather than than feelings. Yeah, I think it was. Heck yeah, I'll to, Dominic. I'll have to figure out, bro. We, these things, the the place that made our hats, it's way too expensive to to continue making them. I'll have to figure out a better way to to get them made. Cause yeah, you would rock one of these hats. So I agree. I did find out some information, so I'll share it with you after we get done. About the hats. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, I was like, that sounds ominous. Hey, babe, after this, we need to talk. Yeah, that's the worst. Don't after ever say that life, to me. No. Mm -hmm. We need to talk. That's one thing we also don't say to each other. <laughs> Did you experience cathartic r release when you dealt with trauma? Um, I don't know if I would call it cathartic release, but I definitely... I mean, maybe that's the best word for it, but I de definitely know that after I've let go of the things that I hold on to, I feel way better. Like, I, 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 like it really does feel like a physical weight mm. off your chest. Yeah. And I've broken our generational curses. I have gone through all yeah. the hell yeah. that there is to go through. Uh, defeated fear, doubt, excuses. Distractions is by far the hardest one. That's because it attacks your pleasure zone, so that's hard. Video games. Is, zone. It does. Video yeah, no, games yeah. gets me. I, you see me gaming. <laughs> like I'll be like, I'm like, I'm gonna play some Outriders tonight. You know, like they get you. Notifications will get you. But as far as getting out of my loss system or my know. grief system, um, I've become very efficient at going through the phases of denial, bargaining, anger, and depression. And so being able to get through that, going to the race to acceptance and accepting what is, and then finding honor or meaning in what it was that was lost. Um, this is a practice that I've gotten good at to be able to have that release from trauma. So I don't know if it's a cathartic release, but it would probably be pretty close to it. 
Um, I think it just falls more under acceptance than it does release. That's my way I cope with it. So it's a really good question, though. <coughs> Nimrod didn't do things wrong. <laughs> That's a funny name, though. <laughs> Love that phrase. Juju Bean. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all, to you. Phil, you're pushing 15,000 likes, bro. Dang, I see you Phil, hitting the button. Dang. Phil, Phil's our, Phil's our number one. Hey, guys, why don't you go ahead and just hammer the likes to help Phil out? Because Phil is trying to get this thing up to 15 and 20K. So I know he's, he's just hammering this button. Can you guys help him out a little bit and hit some likes? That would be really, really good. Just help Phil out. Thank you. There's Nell. There's Digicom. Uh, that's that's our boy Dominic. Alan. I see you guys helping Phil out. Really appreciate you guys. Phil, you uh, got help. There's it's K K yeah. J Ron. I see you. Hero. Appreciate it. I see you. You got Phil, some backup, don't Phil. Him. You got uh, some backup. Let's show your techniques. So what you do is just just really hammer that button, guys. Just lightning fast. Your face, baby. You're so funny. You're so <laughs> these are such a guy. Yeah, these are, these are, a whole bunch of guys. These are, okay, these are the dudes. It's funny. I'm in the anger and depression stage at the same time. You go through all of them. You're gonna go. You'll probably hit bargaining a lot more than you think. I just wrote a whole thing on bargaining. It's far more crafty than I ever thought it was. But your your denial phase. I'm sure you're already through all of that one. I can't believe this happened to me. This isn't real. All that stuff you've gone through. Bargaining is a is a tricky bastard. But anger, anger is because you still know that something was taken and it was injustice. And being able to get to the acceptance part for that has happened is very important for you to let go of what the past already is. The depression part is a part where you're shaming yourself into some sort of like, this was your fault, you should have seen it sooner, I really suck at love, why could she do this, how could he betray me? Like going through these things to try to make it so you can find some sort of um, blame or being able to put accountability even on yourself, yeah. it is not helpful. What has happened, no matter how shitty it is, has already happened. And the race to acceptance is to go through all of the emotions that you're going through without trying to shame yourself or doubt yourself or put yourself down, but to accept what has happened has happened. And when you can get to that point, it allows you to let go of the terrible choices other people make as somehow being your fault. It is not fair. It is not right. It is, it is not the way that anybody should ever treat anybody, but it, it has happened. It is already done. And the way that time works is you can't go backwards, at least at this point. We don't have time machines to do so. But real talk, K. Boone, real talk. The things that you're holding on to for this, people get into their bargaining or they get into like, man, if I could only have seen this and we would have made it work and only this. If you could have them back, would you really want them back? Like if, if you got a wish and your wish was to have them mm -hmm. back, would you mm -hmm. ever be able to trust them again? Would you ever be able to wait for it? Yeah, we're back. Um, Poof, we're back. I also want to know, um, did we talk to him about booking a call with you? You can, okay, yeah. Bone? Yeah, you can book calls. Almost there, look at you, almost 20K. Yeah, okay, Boone, I'll talk to you about it if you want. If you want to talk about it, I'll help you go through this stuff. <clears throat> He's good at it. <laughs> That's not right. What? He's just making jokes about the button pushing. <clears throat> Got it later, Juju Bean. After the trauma I recently experienced, had to be okay with feeling the emotions. True. It's a big part of it. Just being able to let yourself How do you feel do that? Um, you can click the link at the top. Um, I'll also, um, I'll tag you in the link now too by your name. So you'll have two different ways to get it. Yeah. So, yeah, you can just book the call on there. Thank you. Thank you, but guys. Way to go, do, everybody. If you do want to talk to, I'm assuming at this point, you want to talk to Reg, then just... Um, Make sure you put your name in there, kboon0069. Let me know it's you, um, so that way I'll know which calls will go to either me or one of my guys. 
Yeah, I just tagged you in it. Is this your live or what? <laughs> Me, Corey. Okay, I actually I find you very funny, man. <laughs> All right, what time is it, baby? It's nine, nine. Time 40. to go. Yeah, we've been for dying. two and a half hours. The battery's dying. We gotta get out of here. Thank you guys for being a part of this Tuesday night. We spent a lot of time with you guys. We really have. This is a lot of time, but you were great tonight. You were great tonight. You look good too. Thank you. I'm about to love the shit out of you after this. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here on Tuesday. We appreciate you guys you so. Um, I hope you guys are having a great rest of your night. I hope anything that we shared has made your life better. If you guys want to book a call, click the link at the top, and we'll be happy to talk with you guys. We opened up a lot more time frames to be able to do so. In which case, uh, we salute you all as warriors. We can't wait to spend more time yeah. with you guys soon. And uh, like Bill and, Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other, and party on, dude. <laughs> Good night. Good night.